Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water. North Bay Credit Union is proud to be part of Sonoma County's home team. We're your progressive alternative to big banks delivering a full roster of great banking services, but at much lower costs. Our lineup always hits it out of the park. Auto loans, home loans, manufactured home loans, and 100% free checking that pays you back. We're equally proud to support lots of local groups, including the Sonoma Stompers, because that's what neighbors do. We're the home of league-leading Casasa Checking. Casasa Checking is better than free. It pays you, and you choose how you want to be rewarded. Bonus dividends on your deposits or cash back on your debit card purchases. And Casasa makes any ATM a free ATM. It's easy to switch to Casasa in just minutes at NorthBayCU.com. Our convenient branches are just a short stop from anywhere, including our newest Sonoma Valley and Rohnert Park locations. Don't let banks throw curveballs at your budget with high rates and foul fees. Count on North Bay Credit Union to save you money every day. Learn more at NorthBayCU.com or call 707-584-0384. Loans subject to approval. Details at NorthBayCU.com. You're a bridge builder, a connector, a people person. You make every moment count, and you know how to count every moment. You know people who are going places, and you help them get there. California's business is your business. You specialize in special, and we specialize in your specialty. No matter what your background is, or where you want to go, at Nelson, every day is a great day for a first day. Connect with a Nelson recruiter in your city to start working on putting your next first day on the calendar. Nelson, our talent is finding yours. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partners, Tina Schoen Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma, and social media support is provided by Word Mice.
Sunday afternoon baseball. The Stompers and the Stockade here from Palooza Park at Arnold Field. Joseph Broderick and Eric Gleese, a pair of right-handers here today. Welcome in everybody for a sight here with you on this gorgeous Sunday afternoon from Sonoma, California. Joseph Broderick will take the hill, the five foot 11 right-hander for the 34 and 12 Stompers who own a seven and a half game lead in the Pacific Association over the San Rafael Pacifics coming in against the nine and 39 Salinas Stockade, a club in which the Stompers are eight and two overall against here this season. Broderick, and he will face this lineup put out by player manager Chuck Rocker for the Salina Stock Lade leading off in center field. It'll be Cody Bishop. Louis Martini will bat second and shortstop, and Coach Samuel Cannell will hit third over at first base. The cleanup man will be Zane Gelfman at third. Omar Artson will bat fifth and play second. Taylor Zutenhorst will hit sixth. He's the designated hitter here this afternoon. Ryan Rodriguez will bat seventh and play left with Nick Krause behind the plate. Hitting eighth, and then Johnny Knight. We'll start in right field for Salina here this afternoon against Joseph Broderick in his fifth start, 3-0, and oh, with a 3.97 ERA, 22 and two-thirds innings for Broderick. He's allowed 13 runs, 10 earned on 20 hits, 23 strikeouts, and nine walks. He started two games against the Stockade here this year. He's 2-0, and oh, and in his last start, a season-high eight strikeouts in seven innings. He'll face Bishop, Martini, Canella, Gelfman, Artson, Zutenhorst, Rodriguez, Kraus, and Knight. On a gorgeous day, the Stompers enter with a th three-game win streak. And Salina, on the other hand, after dropping a pair yesterday, one in Vallejo in a crazy extra inning game, and then in San Rafael last night, they're on an 18-game skid. Trying to break that here today. Joseph Broderick, the right-handed from West Islip, New York. We'll try and snuff out the Salina offense as we're just moments away from first pitch here on Sonoma TV and on the Sonoma Stompers radio network. 23-6, and six, the home record for the Stompers here this year. They've been absolutely dynamite here in this ballpark. Cody Bishop, the left-handed hitter, stands in at 265, eight home runs, 28 runs batted in. Broderick, the 5'11 right-hander works out of the windup to open the ball game. Working from the third base side of the rubber, he deals in a fastball for strike one on the outside corner. 108 first pitch and 79 degrees here from Palooza Park at Arnold Field. A little bit of a slight breeze indicated by our flag in center blowing across from right to left. And Broderick, so one pitch is hit in the air right at Rayson Romero at shortstop. One away. Bishop hits it on a line. Romero positioned perfectly. So one away, here's Luis Martini. Defensively for the Stompers, it's Jacob Barfield in left, Matt Hibbert in center, Miles Williams over in right. Quitzer and Romero, who just made that catch on the left side of the infield, got it back at second base here today. Brent Gillespie's at first, and Daniel Molinari gets to start behind the plate here this afternoon. First pitch to Luis Martini from Joseph Broderick. He deals in a fastball for strike one across the letters. Molinari with his 13th start behind the plate here this year. Barfield making his sixth start in left. Broderick out of the windup, the 0-1 delivery coming to the shortstop Martini, and he misses high with a fastball, ball one. Fastball slider in the changeup for Joseph Broderick, an occasional curveball. Throw the slider a lot to right-handers, and with plenty of movement, a good pitch. Here it is on one and one, and he... Misses inside of Martini here. Two balls and one strike. Massive lateral movement on that slider for Joseph Broderick. He has not thrown it yet. Here he is on two and one, and the fastball is fouled back and out of play. Martini with a 266 average, also with eight home runs. 30 runs batted in. These two teams, the best home run hitting teams. The Stompers with 71 on the season. Salina with 60, one and two in that category. Two balls and two strikes on Martini. We may see the first slider of the game from Joseph Broderick here. He likes to throw it and he loves to throw it to right-handers. He starts the motion. Here comes the 2-2 to Martini. He does go with the slider and he misses outside and the count is full. Ron Adams calling balls and strikes here this afternoon. Dean Poteet in the field, your Pacific Association umpiring crew here on this Sunday afternoon. Broderick's payoff pitch on the outside corner. Got him looking. 
First strikeout of the ball game for Joseph Broderick. He gets Martini looking the fastball in the outside corner for out number two. So here's Cosimo Canella, the big slugging first baseman. Broderick out of the windup, and he starts Canella with a fastball that tails a little too far inside. One ball and no strikes. Last start against Solano was on the 30th of July. For Broderick, he went seven innings, allowed two runs, four hits, and a season-high eight strikeouts. He misses outside to Canella here, ball two. Just two walks for Broderick. The strikeout-to-walk ratio, phenomenal. 24 strikeouts and nine walks. Around the strike zone early and often is Joseph Broderick when he's on the hill. His 2-0 pitch to Cosimo Canella on the inside corner for strike one. That high three-quarter release for Broderick. He'll get a lot of movement even on the fastball. It leads to that ter tremendous slider movement. It backs up on Canella here. He tried to go inside with the slider and missed. Three balls and one strike. Second season as a stomper. Both seasons, Broderick has entered in the middle or toward the latter part of the season. Last year he was here for the very end of August and then the playoffs. Been here throughout the month of July and in August. The 3-1 pitch is lined on the ground up the middle, and that's a single for Cosimo Canella. First base runner of the game, first hit, the Canella single up the middle. And here is the third baseman, Zane Gelfman. Bishop lined to short. Martini called out on strikes for the first two outs. And the two-out single up the middle by Canella. So Gillespie's going to hold him on over at first. With Zane Gelfman coming to the plate, 259 average, 13 home runs, and 30 runs batted in. So we'll see Broderick out of the stretch for the first time here today. Straight up and down, high set. Here's his first pitch to Gelfman. He misses high with a fastball. Napa and Vallejo are underway. They're in the top of the first inning. Admirals lead that game 2-0. So San Rafael with the day off today, and the Stompers a chance to pick up a half a game on the seven and a half game lead. Canella leads from first, here's the 1-0, and that's outside, another fastball from Broderick misses. Two balls and no strikes to the cleanup man, Zane Gelfman. San Rafael, who beat Salina last night, 8-3. They'll get the day off today and tomorrow. Stompers play today and tomorrow. Don't forget that, a Monday night matchup with the Napa Silverados tomorrow at 6.05 right here. Palooza Park and Arnold Field. Canella leads from first, a decent lead. Broderick spins and throws over to first, and Canella's back with a head first dive. No score just underway, top of the first inning. Two quick outs, and then the Canella two out single back up the middle. Deep on the left side of the infield, Gata is playing up toward the middle at second. Straight away in the outfield on. Zane Gelfman, the 2-0, a high fastball swung on and miss. Two balls in one strike, the count on Gelfman. Canell is over at first base. It's game number six in a row for the Stompers. We have two more before an off day coming on Wednesday. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Gelfman, and he hits it softly in the air. Right at Gata at second, so the inning is over. Couple of line outs, a strikeout for Joseph Broderick. No runs on a hit. Salina leaves a man. Stompers coming to bat in the bottom half of the first, right here on Sonoma TV and on the Sonoma Stompers Radio Network. You're a bridge builder, a connector, a people person. You make every moment count, and you know how to count every moment. You know people who are going places, and you help them get there. California's business is your business. You specialize in special, and we specialize in your specialty. No matter what your background is or where you want to go, at Nelson, every day is a great day for a first day. Connect with a Nelson recruiter in your city to start working on putting your next first day on the calendar. Nelson, our talent is finding yours.
We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Bottom of the first inning, no score. Eric Gleese will start for the Salina Stockade today. Same pitching matchup that we had the last time these two teams faced off, and here's the lineup that Gleese will face, as announced by manager Zach Pace and presented by Sotheby's International Realty. Nick Gata leads off at second base. Matt Hibbert will hit second in center. Chris Quinter will bat third and play third with Brenton Gillespie, the cleanup man, over at first. Miles Williams back in the lineup here today, hitting fifth in right field. Jacob Barfield will bat sixth and left. Nick Kern, the DH, here this afternoon, batting seventh with Daniel Molinari. Catching and hitting eighth, and then Rayson Romero rounds out the lineup edge shortstop. Or Zach Pace here today. Gleese, ninth start, one in six with a 5.76 ERA, but boy was he tremendous the last time these two teams faced off. The best start he's turned in of the season. He'll face Nick Gata to lead things off here in the bottom of the first, and Gleese deals in a fastball for strike one. Gleese. Back on the 30th of July, four no-hit innings. He went six innings in that game, allowed just two runs on five hits. He struck out eight. His own one to Gotta miss his outside one ball and one strike. Broderick just outdueled him in that game, pitching seven innings. Stoppers won that game eight to two. Here's the one one. And Gotta sprays it foul off to the left. Gleese in that game came out with the game tied. At two, and then the Stompers jumped all over the Salina bullpen late in that game. But four no-hit innings to open the ball game for Eric Gleese, the 6'4 right-hander. He has got a one and two batting from the left side, the toughest man in the league to retire. His one-two pitch, and Gata takes outside two balls and two strikes. First in the league and on-base percentage, Gata sporting a 551 on-base percentage. Second in the league in batting average at 366. Left-handed hitter awaits the 2-2 from Gleese. Here it is. He punches it on the ground to short. Martini will charge the throw to first on the run. They got him. Nick Gata retired on a grounder to short to open the ball game here in the bottom of the first. And here comes the center fielder, Matt Hibbert. Defensively for Salina, Rodriguez, Bishop, Knight. Outfield left to right. Gelfman and Martini on the left side. Artson and Canella on the right side. Nick Krause behind the plate doing the catching here today for right-hander Eric Gleese. DeAngelis with the day off. With Barfield and left Butcher with the day off. And Barrios re-injuring that right thumb during last night's game on a swing. You know, he was dealing with that right thumb injury for about 10 or 11 days. The first pitch to Matt Hibbert is high and in for ball one. Remember in the game last night, Nick Kern pinch hit for Pedro Barrios, who had the start at shortstop in the sixth inning, and Kern promptly hit his first home run of the season. The 1-0 pitch to Matt Hibbert outside from Gleese for ball two. Stompers trying to pick up where they left off last night after the 10-4 win, scoring four runs in the sixth and four runs in the seventh against the Napa Silverados. The 2-0 pitch to Hibbert is right there for strike one. Hibbert in his first week as a stomper batting 333 has been on base half the time. An even 500 on base percentage for the speedy center fielder. The 2-1 pitch from Gleason and Hibbert rolls it foul up third. Gleese out of the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Spent some time in the Frontier League with the Florence Freedom. Yeah, it's Hibbert in a 2-2 count with nobody on and one out in the bottom of the first inning. No score. He deals on 2-2, two and, two and Hibbert hits a breaking ball on the ground to short. 
Martini will have to hurry the throw in time to get Hibbert. So back-to-back -back grounders to Martini at short in which he had to hurry the throw to get Gata out of the left-handed batter's box and then to get Matt Hibbert, who runs very well. So here's Chris Quintzer trying to put a base runner on for the stoppers here in the bottom of the first after two quick ground outs to Martini at short. Warm when we started. It's going to get warmer throughout the day. Quintzer, the left-handed hitter against Eric Gleese, the six-foot-four right-hander, and he's downhill with the first pitch, and Quintzer offers at the bunt. Trying to drag attempt there. Came up empty for strike one. We saw Quitzer do it earlier in the week. Quitzer not known for the speed, but when he gets them, picking them up and putting them down, he can move a little bit. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Gleese, and Quitzer takes outside, ball one. Martini is up the middle, not right behind the second base bag, but as if you're playing for a double play ball at short, and Gelfman is well off the line at third, the 1-1, and Quitzer's out in front of the changeup. One ball and two strikes the count. Brent Gillespie's on deck. He's been swinging a hot bat as of late. Really ever since he's put on a stomper uniform. The one-two pitch from Eric Gleese. And Quitzer takes very high ball two. Quitzer who's reached in an even 20 straight. Batting at 307. The two-two pitch from Gleese. Rope down the right field line. That's going to hook foul. Quitzer, 307, average six home runs. 35 runs batted in. A 2 2 again from Gleese. That misses inside, and the count is full. I think that 36 for Quitzer driven in on the year. 3 and 2, Gillespie, the left hander, on deck. Two quick outs for Gleese to open the ball game. A pair of ground outs to short. Here's his payoff pitch to Chris Quitzer, and that's inside ball four. First stomper base runner on a walk from Eric Gleese, which you won't see very often out of him in 50 innings. He's struck out 42, and he's now walked 29. So a good strikeout to walk ratio for Gleese. And here's Brent Gillespie, who in the ballgame last night went three for five, a two-run home run and two doubles. And then in San Rafael the previous night, drove in five. Swinging the hottest bat on this team right now, Brent Gillespie, the left-handed hitter, over at first base here today. First pitch from Gleese, and Gillespie takes inside and low. 26 games for Gillespie. This is his 27th this year. He's been on base in every game. And out of those 26 games, eight home runs and 32 runs batted in. The 1-0 pitch. Low ball two. Nobody hotter than Gillespie. And he just has yet to cool off, hitting at 330. And with the on-base percentage for Gillespie at 454. Quitzer at first base after the two-out walk. He takes his lead. At least out of the stretch on 2-0, and, oh, and Gillespie pops it up. Out at short, Martini, the shortstop, backpedaling onto the outfield grass. He'll make the catch, and the inning is over. So we're through one scoreless here this afternoon. We'll go to the second. Five, six, seven hitters due up for the stockade when we return. North Bay Credit Union is proud to be part of Sonoma County's home team. We're your progressive alternative to big banks, delivering a full roster of great banking services, but at much lower costs. Our lineup always hits it out of the park. Auto loans, home loans, manufactured home loans, and 100% free checking that pays you back. We're equally proud to support lots of local groups, including the Sonoma Stompers, because that's what neighbors do. We're the home of league-leading Casasa Checking. Casasa Checking is better than free. It pays you, and you choose how you want to be rewarded. Bonus dividends on your deposits or cash back on your debit card purchases. And Casasa makes any ATM a free ATM. It's easy to switch to Casasa in just minutes at NorthBayCU.com. Our convenient branches are just a short stop from anywhere, including our newest Sonoma Valley and Rohnert Park locations. Don't let banks throw curveballs at your budget with high rates and foul fees. Count on North Bay Credit Union to save you money every day. Learn more at NorthBayCU.com or call 707-584-0384.
Or loan subject. Stoppers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. To Omar Artson, 8-2 and two in 10 games against the Stockade this year, the Stomper record, and now the 2-0 is inside. Make that the 2-1. Three balls and a strike on Omar Artson to open this top of the second inning. Stoppers has got a two-out walk and then failed to bring a man home, so we're scoreless. The 3-1 is at the knees, and the count is full. Broderick heavy with the fastball here in the first inning, plus. What will he come with on three and two to Artson? Probably just challenge him here. The payoff pitch on the outside corner. Second strikeout of the ball game for Joseph Broderick and Omar Artson pleading his case at home plate. Second strikeout for Joseph, and here is the designated hitter, Taylor Zutenhorst. Zutenhorst, who started the season over in San Rafael, came over to the stock gate. He's been hitting 250 with the new club. Left-handed hitter to the wide open stance. Broderick's first pitch to him is a fastball swung on and missed. Broderick, not a guy that's going to light up the radar gun. He'll sit 84 to 87, 88. Get it up to 90 occasionally. Will the right-hander? Here's his own one, and that changeup dips a little bit too low off the outside part of the plate, one and one. Like a lot of the Stomper starters, he'll throw the changeup more to the left-handed hitters than he will the right-handed hitters. His 1-1 one -one delivery, and Zutenhorst hits it in the air to left. That's slicing away from Barfield, and that will hit off the wall. Barfield's long throw into second, and they have Zutenhorst dead to rights. That's the second game in a row that they've tested the Stomper's left fielders. Nico Tony did it last night, and he was nailed at second in here. Taylor Zutenhorst thrown out by half the baseline for the second out in the inning. It was a rocket off the bat. It banged off the wall, and Jacob Barfield making just his fifth starting left field played the carom perfectly through a seed to Nick Gata at second base, and Taylor Zutenhorst halfway between first and second kind of went well. And Rodriguez on the first pitch lines a base hit to left. The two-out single for Ryan Rodriguez would have been back-to-back -back hits instead of first and second and one out. Stockade have a man at first and two out for Nick Kraus. Kraus, who's been one of the better hitters on this team, batting at 275. Highest average second to just Johnny Knight in the lineup here today, and they're hitting eighth and ninth for the Stockade. Man at first, two out. Scoreless here in the top of the second. Kraus, the right-handed hitter against Broderick, working from the third base side of the rubber out of the stretch. The right-hander comes set, short lead by Rodriguez at first, and Kraus squares around and takes a fastball for a called strike at the letters. Three hits against Broderick in the game. A couple of singles here this inning, the Canela single in the first. Kraus awaits the 0-1. Here it comes from Broderick, and that slider stays a little bit too high. One and one, the count on Kraus. Johnny Knight, the nine hole hitters on deck. Broderick would love to face him to open the third. His one one pitch. Kraus, left center. Two run, home run. Nick Kraus, 
Salina's on the board first here in the top of the second on Krause's third home run of the season. Second home run for Kraus to make that his third home run. Tenth and eleventh runs batted in, and Kraus continues to hit for the stockade. Third home run in a stockade uniform. The second against the Stompers, so an early deficit here for Joseph Broderick to try and pitch around after getting two quick outs, the two-out single to Rodriguez, and then the Kraus home run. That still hasn't landed. He just demolished it over the press box in left center field, over the scoreboard, over everything. Here's Johnny Knight in the first pitch from Broderick's inside ball one. one 0 -oh pitch from Joseph Broderick to Johnny Knight misses inside. Two balls and no strikes to count. The last time these two teams played, Salina went up on a two-run home run by Cody Bishop in the third inning. The Stompers went on to score eight unanswered and win that game eight to two. Trying to do the same thing here on this Sunday afternoon. Broderick's 2-0 pitch, and that's on the outside corner tonight, 2-1. Broderick's been bit by the home run ball a little bit here this season. It's the sixth he's given up here in 2019, and he deals a strike on the outside corner tonight. That evens the count at 2-2. Two and two. Sixth home run allowed in five starts for Broderick. He's even the count at two balls and two strikes here to Johnny Knight. They're straight away in the outfield for Knight. The 2-2 slider on the inside corner fouled straight back. Molinari, they're set up away. Broderick missed in. Thankfully, Knight only got a piece. Still two and two. Nobody on in, two out, the 2-2 two -two pitch from Broderick. Outside, and the count is full. The count full with the leadoff man, Cody Bishop, in the on-deck circle. Here's the payoff pitch from Broderick, and that's low ball four. Two-out walk immediately following the two-run home run. And Cody Bishop will bat. Bishop with eight home runs. He's hit the ball well, especially here in this ballpark. Knights at first. Bishop who lined to Racing Romero for the first out of the ball game. Trying to extend this. It's a line at top of the second. Broderick's first pitch to Bishop misses inside and low a fastball. One ball and no strikes. Now you look back to that play where Zutenhorst lined a base hit off the left field wall and was thrown out trying to extend it into a double. Would have been a three run for Nick Krause. Roderick peeks over the shoulder. Here's his 1-0 to Bishop and he pops it out of play. Early runs here in this ball game. Early runs between the Silverados and the Admirals. Vallejo leads that game 3-0 on the road. They're in the bottom of the first inning. Broderick's 1-1 to Bishop. High and away, two balls in one strike. Salina desperately trying to snap an 18-game losing streak. Looking desperately for their 10th win of the season. Stompers looking for win number 35 here this afternoon. Knight leads from first. Here's the 2-1 from Broderick. And Bishop lines it down the right field line. That'll go to the corner and possibly extra bases. Williams gets to it now. His throw goes into second base. Around third is Knight. Here comes the throw from Romero to the plate. Molinari with an athletic leap and the tag to tag out Johnny Knight. That goes down 9-6-2 for the put out. The throw from Williams went into second base after the Bishop double. 
and Romero spun and threw from deep and short. The throw was high. Molinari leaped, and he slaps the tag on Johnny Knight. That ends the inning and holds another run off the board. We're through one and a half. It's the stock A2. Stoppers coming to bat in the home half of the second. Bottom of the second inning, 2 nothing. Stockade. Stomper bats trying to get them back in this one. A two-run home run by Nick Krause in the top half of the inning, but the tremendous relay from Rayson Romero to nail Johnny Knight at the plate and keep a third run off the board in the top half of the second. Miles Williams, who started that relay, really will lead things off here in the bottom of the second inning. Stomper's got a base runner against Eric Gleason in the first on a quitzer two-out walk, but that was all. Four hits for Salina in the top half of the inning. And now we have a delay on the field. Ron Adams, our home plate umpire, has gone down the right field line for one reason or another. It'll be Miles Williams, Jacob Barfield, and Nick Kern, 5-6-7. And for Williams, who has reached in 23 of his last 24 games, he pinch hit in the ball game last night late in the seventh inning, drew a walk and scored and then struck out, but he scored in that seventh inning in which the Stompers scored four times against the Silverados to really extend that lead late. And now Chuck Rocker, the Salina manager, has come out of the dugout. He's going to take a walk up the first baseline. For what reason, we don't know. Trying to figure out what's going on in the field. Willie Ethington, the Stomper first base coach, is over talking to Dean Poteet. Now Ron Adams and Chuck Rocker talking down the right field line just past the Stomper dugout. Krause is talking to Williams. Williams' walk-up song is already played. It's over and done with. So when we have an explanation of what exactly is going on, I guess we'll relay to you what we have. In the meantime, it is 2-0 Stockade, and the Stompers trying to get on the board against Eric Gleese, who was phenomenal his last time out. These two teams played, and it was Broderick against Gleese in that game. Gleese went six, four no-hit innings in that game. He went six full, allowed just two runs, and Broderick in that game went seven and allowed three, make that two runs. So delay continues here in the bottom of the second inning. And Eric Gleese is going to take some warm-up tosses with Omar Arts. And don't forget, everybody, we are here tomorrow against Annapolis Silverado. It was one of two Monday games 
here in the 2019 season. 6.05 first pitch tomorrow against the Napa Silverados, and then we're on the road on Tuesday in Vallejo at 6.30. There's Ron Adams as he he's going to take a walk back to home plate. No, now he's going to turn around and stop halfway up the first baseline. Cody Bishop make that. Johnny Knight, the right fielder. Oh, I bet he was getting checked down in the dugout. He was tagged out at home plate to end the inning. And the tag with Molinari leaping and having to reach down and tag Knight, he got him on the upper half of his body. And Knight walked away with no helmet on. The helmet had come off. So Knight looked like he was getting maybe checked on, maybe taped up by the stomper trainer in the dugout. So that's what we're led to believe it was as Knight comes out of the stomper dugout after being looked at. He'll head out to right field. So everybody's ready to go here in the bottom of the second inning after a very, very short delay. It's Williams and Barfield, then Kern here in the bottom of the second. Stoppers trail 2-0. Eric Gleese's first pitch to open the second inning. That's inside, and it got the shirt of Williams. So hit by pitch to Miles Williams. Leadoff base runner here in the second. Jacob Barfield's going to come up. Remember, he hit a big home run in the game last night. He went back-to-back -back with Gillespie in the sixth inning. And at the time, Gillespie's home run made it 4-2, to breaking our tie. And then Barfield's insurance home run made it 5-2. to And then later in that inning, Nick Kern hit a home run to make it 6-2. to All three of those home runs were against Napa starter Billy Filo in the sixth inning of last night's ball game. Williams at first after the hit by pitch. Barfield at the plate, right-handed hitter. First pitch from Gleesey, misses high with a fastball. One ball and no strikes the count. Long top half of the second for Joseph Broderick. Through 24 pitches in that second inning. Gleason 1-0 and, oh and Barfield hits it in the air. High to left center field. Rodriguez back. Track. Tie game. Jacob Barfield's 13th home run of the season. Two days in a row for Barfield. We're tied at two. An absolute missile off the bat of Jacob Barfield on a 1-0 pitch from Eric Gleese. First hit of the ball game for the Stompers, a Barfield two-run home run, and we're all leaving at two apiece here in the bottom of the second. 13th home run for Barfield, his 27th and 28th runs batted in. So here's Nick Kern, that home run brought to you by Epicenter. Make your next family adventure an epic one at Epicenter. So here's Nick Kern hitting at 265 with a home run and six runs batted in. First pitch to him from Eric Galise, and he taps it foul along the third baseline. The count is 0-1. Kern last night, he pinched it in the sixth, hit a home run, a solo home run, then drove in a run on a ground out in the seventh, so two RBIs last night. Two nights ago in San Rafael, he was the DH and drove in a run on a base hit as he takes. Outside from Gleese here, and the count is one and one. Three RBIs in the last two games for Nick Kern getting back into the action, and Gleese's 1-1 one -one slider is outside for ball two. So a pair of two-run home runs here in this second inning. And deja vu from last night's game. Here's the 2-1 to Kern, and that's low, ball three. What I mean by that? Napa scored in the top half of the second inning last night. Two times, and then the Stompers answered with two in the bottom of the second. Then we were scoreless until the sixth. Here's the 3-1, and Kern rolls it foul along third. A great pitcher's duel is what we witnessed last night from Billy Filo and Jacob Cox. Filo, through the first five innings, allowed just three hits before the Stompers did get to him in the sixth inning. The payoff pitch coming to Nick Kern, and the breaking ball misses high, and he's worked a walk. Hit by pitch, home run, walk here in the bottom of the second inning, and Daniel Molinari is going to come to the plate. And then Jacob Cox last night turned in his second quality start in a row, going six innings, allowing three hits, all three in the first two innings, and a career-high six-strikeout ball game for Jacob Cox. So 
So Molinari is going to stand in. Right-handed hitting catcher. 234 average for him. Kearns over at first base. First pitch from Eric Gleason. Molinari hits it down the right field line. Knight on the run over into foul territory. He reaches over and it falls in foul territory. Strike one on Daniel Molinari, a long fly ball down the right field line. Molinari does have a home run and eight runs batted in, getting the 13th start of the season behind the plate here this afternoon. Nothing in one, the count. Kern's over at first base. He was dealing with a hamstring injury for the first two months of the season. The 0-1, and Molinari hits it in the air. Center field, not very deep. Bishop will come in on it, and he'll make the catch. One out, here comes the shortstop, Rayson Romero. More on Kern. He doesn't have a stolen base on the season, but runs very well, the UCLA product. Middle infielder, shortstop, second baseman. He could play a little bit of 30, probably play some outfield. Kern, just a phenomenal athlete over at first base. A nagging hamstring injury for the first two months of the season. Finally activated this week, and he's been very productive, driving in three runs, and he's on base once again here today. Here's Romero, the shortstop. First pitch to him from Eric Gleese, right down the middle for strike one. We talk about it all the time with Romero with the average at 180 and the on base at 421. Gets on base one way or another. Was on base with a base hit last night. He awaits the 0-1 pitch from Gleese. Out of the stretch, set of the belt. Now Romero's going to call time, and it was, was it granted? It was granted. Gleese threw the pitch anyway, which is exactly what you're taught to do. The time was granted to Rayson Romero. The count remains no balls in one strike, with Kern at first base and one out, and a tie game here in the second. Throw over to first, easily by Eric Gleese, and... Nick Kern dives back. No balls in one strike to count on Romero, who's reached in nine straight, trying to make it an even 10. Glees at the belt, the right-hander on 0-1, and, and Romero takes inside 1-1. One and one. Gelfman behind the bag at third, middle infield pinching for a double play. The 1-1 pitch. High and away, snap throw back to first, not in time. Krause has a good arm from his knees, threw down to first. Kern got back in. The two-run home run from Jacob Barfield has tied us here in the bottom of the second at two. The 2-1 pitch from Gleese, Romero pops it up, and that will get out of play down the right field line. Two balls and two strikes to count on Romero. The leadoff man, Nick Gata, is on deck. Two balls, two strikes. Romero digs back in. Gleese ready. From the stretch, the 2-2. Outside, the count is full. Two walks against Gleese in the ballgame already. The quits are two-out walk in the first, and then the Nick Kern walk here in the second inning. That followed the Jacob Barfield home run. Somper's trying to add on here in the second after tying it. Payoff pitch coming from Gleese. Here it is. Kern goes. The pitch is hit in the air to right field. That's going to fall in front of Knight for a base hit. Kern trying to go to third. Here's the throw. The tag is late. The base hit for Racing Romero to right. Nick Kern was off and running on the pitch. He had to hesitate as he hit second base. Knight tried to deke him. Kern picked back up the speed, continued to run, and he goes from first to third on the base hit. So Romero has reached in an even 10 straight, and here is Nick Gata. Gata, the left-handed hitter. He's reached in 41 of the 43 games in which he's played this year. Bats with first and third and one out, a chance to drive in a run and give the Stompers a lead. Romero goes, the pitch is high and away, and it hits off the glove of Kraus. Here comes Kern. He will score. Stompers lead 3-2. to two. 
Grayson Romero will get a stolen base on the play. Kern comes in to score. Three runs here in the bottom of the second inning, and the Stompers have taken the lead. The pitch was high and away to Gata. And Krause had to stand up and hit off his glove and went all the way to the backstop. So Romero's at second with just one out. The 1 0 inside to Gata. Go down a wild pitch for Gleese. Tough play for Krause behind the plate. Romero's at second with one out. Got away ahead in the count 2 0. Stompers have scored three times already, and this is the first at bat with a man in scoring position. And Gata hits it in the air, left field. That's it. Well, Rodriguez on the track. He looks up, and Gata has left the yard. Two run home run, Nick Gata, and it's 5 to 2. Gata goes the other way for his fourth home run of the season. 24th and 25th RBIs for Gata. That home run brought to you by Epicenter. Make your next family adventure an epic one at Epicenter. Two two run home runs in the inning. Gata's fourth. The Stompers have jumped out in front five to two. Gata the other way. Three of his four home runs the other way. For the contact leadoff guy. Here's Matt Hibbert. Base is empty and one out. Gleese's first pitch. Hibbert takes a fastball for strike one on the inside corner. So Gata has now reached in 42 of the 44 games this year. The 0 1 from Gleese. Hibbert takes a breaking ball inside. One ball, one strike on Hibbert. He's 0 for 1, grounded to short. Ball is carrying here today. Got to put a very good swing on that pitch. Here's the 1-1, one, one and Hibbert takes outside. Warm day, ball is going to carry no matter what. Barfields was smoked. Krause's was smoked, and got to put a very good swing on that 2-0 pitch. Got a pitch to hit. Here's the 2-1 to Hibbert, and he taps it foul. Two in two on Hibbert. Hit by pitch, opened the inning to Williams, then Barfield hit a home run. Driving in two, Kern walked. Romero singled. The 2-2 two -two pinch to Hibbert, misses low and away. The count is full. Kern scored on a wild pitch, making it 3-2, to two, giving the Stompers the lead. And then Nick got his two-run home run to straightaway left. Here's the payoff pitch, and Hibbert takes outside ball four. Third walk issued by Eric Gleese, and now Chuck Rocker, the manager for Salina, is going to take a stroll out into the dugout. Nobody's up in the Salina bullpen. But Rocker's going to go out and just calm down his starter, who really pitched a phenomenal ball game the last time that these two teams faced off. It was he and Broderick facing off, and Broderick just, just did one-up him, pitching one more inning. But, boy... Gleese has gotten just one out here in this inning. The Molinari fly out to center, and he's left a ton of pitches over the plate. That's really been the only difference. Stompers working good counts against Gleese. Barfield's home run was on 1-0, and and Gata's home run was on 2-0. and Ball behind hitters, and this Stomper team, the best offensive team in the league, will take advantage. Here's Chris Quitzer. With Hibbert at first base and one out, he walked his first time up against Gleese, the first walk that he'd issued in the ball game, three overall. Quits are the left-handed batter. Hibbert at first base with tremendous speed. First pitch to Quitzer. Outside by inches. One ball and no strikes to count. Nobody's pitching Quitzer inside. They've stayed away. They've stayed down to the left-handed hitter. The 1-0. Reaches for that fastball and fouls it out of play off to the left. We saw San Rafael come into Quintzer two nights ago and he hit about the furthest home run that I've ever seen in San Rafael. Hibbert leads from first with one out. The 1-1. One -one. 
inside to Quincer for ball two. Quincer ahead in the count, two balls and a strike. Kraus sets the target. Here comes the pitch from Gleese. Ooh, good fastball for Quincer to hit there. He just got on top of it, fouling it straight down. He'll want that pitch back. Right down Broadway to Quincer. He just ticked it. The count evens at two and two. Quincer was reached in 21 straight. Up and down this lineup, really just no holes. Hibbert at first. Four stolen bases in five games for him. The 2-2, he takes off. The pinch to Quincer, swung on and missed. Kraus just around the second is late. Fifth stolen base for Matt Hibbert. Quincer goes down on strikes for the second out. First strikeout of the game for Eric Gleese. And here's Brent Gillespie. He's the ninth stopper to hit here in this inning. Gillespie, who's been mashing the baseball as of late. Man at second and two out for Gillespie. He popped up softly to Martini at short his first time against Gleese. First pitch. Pops up again. Left side of the infield. Gelfman holds up the glove, shading his eyes. He does have the sunglasses on in foul territory at third, and that'll fall. In foul territory. That's going to be an error on Gelfman over at third, allowing it to fall. Those are tough errors to give guys. But anything that extends the at bat, like a pop up there in foul territory that's dropped, will go down as an error. And those are tough ones. And Gelfman, players will tell you, yeah, the sun, though. Well, here's Gillespie, who gets a second life after fouling the pitch off. Here's the 0-1. That's it in the air, right field. Knight going back at the track. See you later. The third two-run home run in the inning. Stoppers lead 7-2. They won't stop. For the second game in a row, the Stompers have homered three times in one inning. That two-run home run by Brent Gillespie brought to you by Epicenter. So the Stompers have batted around here in the second inning. Miles Williams will come to the plate. He opened this inning being hit by the pitch. The first one from Gleese, a breaking ball, snaps in for strike one. Two-run home run for Barfield, two-run home run for Gata, and that was Gillespie's ninth of the season. Now he has 34 RBIs, and Miles Williams takes a fastball from Gleese down low. Nine home runs and 34 RBIs in 27 games for Brent Gillespie. The 1-1. Williams fights off an inside fastball, the pitch that he would like to have back. It just kept running in on the hands, and Williams could not hold up the swing. and He did go all the way around and got a piece of the bat. The count moves to one and two on Miles Williams. He was hit by a pitch and scored. That was earlier this inning. The one-two pitch from Gleese. Breaking ball outside, two and two. Williams, the 10th man to bat. And he rolls it on the ground up the middle. Martini at short slides to his feet. The throw. What a play. Out at shortstop by Lewis Martini. The Stompers score seven times here in the bottom of the second inning. A two-run home run from Gata, from Gillespie, from Barfield. It's seven to two, we'll go to the third. North Bay Credit Union is proud to be part of Sonoma County's home team. We're your progressive alternative to big banks, delivering a full roster of great banking services, but at much lower costs. Our lineup always hits it out of the park. Auto loans, home loans, manufactured home loans, and 100% free checking that pays you back. 
We're equally proud to support lots of local groups, including the Sonoma Stompers, because that's what neighbors do. We're the home of league-leading Casasa Checking. Casasa Checking is better than free. It pays you, and you choose how you want to be rewarded. Bonus dividends on your deposits or cash back on your debit card purchases. And Casasa makes any ATM a free ATM. It's easy to switch to Casasa in just minutes at NorthBayCU.com. Our convenient branches are just a short stop from anywhere, including our newest Sonoma Valley and Rohnert Park locations. Don't we would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Well, we go to the top of the third inning. And the Stompers lead 7-2. to two. Louis Martini leads things off, and Joseph Broderick deals high for ball one. Well, if you're just joining us, are you tuned out for a second when the Stompers were trailing 2-0? Two Three two-run home runs in the bottom of the second inning. Pitches high to Martini, 2-0. First it was Jacob Barfield, then it was Nick Gata, and then it was Brent Gillespie, and the Stompers score seven times to take a 7-2 to two lead, and Broderick Slider misses outside to Martini here, 3-0. The 2-3-4 three, three, spots for Salina here in the third, and a four-pitch walk to Luis Martini opens this top of the third inning. Broderick, after giving up the two-run home run to Kraus, trying to settle down here in this third. Two walks and two strikeouts against him in the game. Stompers who scored seven times on just four hits. Three of them home runs. The other was a Racing Romero single. Here's Cosimo Canella. He singled up the middle his first time against Broderick, who deals in a first pitch strike on the outside corner, and the count is 0-1. Getting ahead early and stay ahead. The MO for Broderick now with a five-run cushion as we enter the third inning. Martini's over at first. Here's the 0-1 delivery, and that slider catches the outside part of the strike zone at the letters to Canella, and it's nothing in two. Martini leads from first after the walk to open the inning. A lot of offense in this game. A lot of offense between Vallejo and Napa already in that game as well. Here's the 0-2 pitch from Broderick. Slider pulled down the left field line foul. 6-1 Vallejo, and they're only in the bottom of the second inning. So Vallejo's put up three runs in each of the first two innings over there and lead the Silverados. Napa has fallen down to fourth place after the loss here last night, sitting at 500 with a 23-23 and 23 record. Vallejo above 500 at 24-23 and 23 after the win yesterday. Broderick's 0-2 delivery again to Canella, a... Gets inside with a fastball, and Canella is able to fight it off to stay alive. Stop presented with that 34 and 12 record, 22 games above 500. Looking to pick up a half a game today with San Rafael having the day off. They won last night. They're 28 and 21, seven and a half games back. The 8-3 winning over the Stockade last night for San Rafael. Still nothing in two on Canella. Martini leads from first. Nobody out. Top of the third inning. Here's the 0-2 from Broderick. Slider taken outside and low. The slider's been good for Broderick and probably throw it a couple more times in this at bat to Canelli. He does have two strikeouts. Neither with the slider, though. Coming off a career high or make that a season high. Eight strikeout game against the Stockade the last time he pitched against him. Here's the one, two, and that fastball is high and away. That was back on the 30th of July. So the last start for Broderick, actually. He faced off against Iglesias, and Broderick has the better of the two here today. Two balls and two strikes looking for the first out of the inning. Joseph Broderick, he works from the stretch. Long pause, now the 2-2, and that's low. Molinari can't find it straight down. He gets to it, and Martini stays put over at first. 
The count is full. Molinari wants a new baseball after that one skipped in the third. It has a little scud on it. So Ron Adams will toss it out. Walk open the inning to Martini. Broderick trying to avoid back-to-back -back walks. And this stockade team, they can hit the baseball. Second in the league in home runs. 61 on the season. Stompers lead with 74. Here's the payoff to Canella, and he hits it on the ground to second. God is there on two hops. He'll feed to second for one. Romero to first, and the throw is late. Canella reaches for the second time, this time on a fielder's choice. Martini is forced out at second, four to six, for the first out of the inning. So here's Zane Gelfman. He lined out to Ghana to end the first inning. He's 0 for 1. Zane's girlfriend is here. She flew in from Oklahoma today and actually surprised Zane. He had no idea she was coming, and our ceremonial first pitch was thrown out by her. So a special day for the Salina third baseman. She flew all the way out from Oklahoma to see him. He'll bat with a man at first and one out. In a 7-2 stomper lead here in the top of the third. First pitch to him from Brodrick. He swings and fouls it away. Stompers winners of eight of their last ten and three in a row. Vallejo, five straight wins for the Admirals to take over third place. They've won nine of ten. They are very hot right now, and the Stompers will visit them on Tuesday night. Broderick's nothing in one pitch to Gelf from the slider stays above the strike zone. One and one the count. As mentioned, San Rafael off today. They're up today and tomorrow. Stompers play today and tomorrow. So between the two games, a chance to pick up a full game in the standings. Canella leads from first base. Broderick, the high set. The right-hander deals on one and one, and Gelfman takes strike two, a fastball at the knees. We haven't seen the slider much from Broderick today, and that's due to the fact that he has been getting hit around a little bit. Five hits and two and a third against Broderick. It's just his offense says, giving him a lead here in the third inning. One ball, two strike pitch coming from the right-hander to Gelfman. Runner goes. The pitch is high. Molinari's throw down to second base is into center field. Canella has a stolen base. The pitch was high to Gelfman. The count is two and two, so he will bat with a man in scoring position and one out. Canella, who got a great jump. Molinari's throw. It's over the head of Gata at second. Hibbert and Romero right there to back it up, keeping Canella at second base. Two and two the count with a man at second, one out. Back to Broderick. He may go with the slider here. Hasn't thrown it much. The confidence level is there for it today. The 2-2, two -two and that slider is outside. When he has thrown it, he's missed outside a majority of the time. Hasn't thrown it as well today as he has on the season. Trying to find some sort of groove. Really just hasn't found a groove. He looked good in the first inning throwing 17 pitches, but he did give up a hit. The payoff pitch coming to Gelfman with Arnson on deck. The 3-2 from Broderick outside ball four. So the third walk for Joseph Broderick, the second in the inning, and that's just not something you see out of Broderick, the more walks than strikeouts. He came into the game with 23 strikeouts and only nine walks in four starts. Averaging more than a strikeout an inning. Coming into the ball game, the right-hander from West Islip, New York. Here's Omar Artson. Called out on strikes in the second inning. It was a fastball in the outside corner from Broderick. Both of his strikeouts with fastballs here today. After we saw so many strikeouts in the ballgame last night, here's the first pitch, and Arntzen takes on the outside corner. Nothing in one the count. Last night, the Stompers struck out 14 Silverados, and the Stompers, as an offense, struck out 11 times. It only walked twice. Only five walks combined in that game last night. Dominant pitching as Arntzen swings and misses at the 0-1 Broderick slider. So we had a masterful pitching performance last night from both sides. A lot of swings.
Broderick way ahead, nothing in two on Artson, who's 0 for 1. Here's the pitch. Slider this time dips a little bit low and outside, 1 and 2. Two walks in the inning of fielder's choice. Canella's at second, Gelfman at first. Martini erased on the fielder's choice. He opened the inning with a walk. One ball, two strikes. Broderick still way ahead. Long pause here. He looks to second, and now the 1 2. At the letters, called strike three. Artson down looking for the second time in the ball game. Third strike out of the game for Joseph Broderick. Here's Zutenhorst. Well, Zutenhorst lined a scorching single off the left field wall his first time up. Jacob Barfield with making just his fifth start of the season and left. Played it perfectly on the carom and threw Zutenhorst down at second base by half the baseline. Left-handed hitter at the plate. Two on, two out. Here's the first pitch, and Broderick misses outside ball one. Maybe a changeup, or he tried the backdoor slider there and just spun, never moved. Stayed outside for ball one. They're deep all the way around the infield against Zutenhorst. Broderick looks to second three times, now throws on one and oh, and Zutenhorst is over the top of the two-seam fastball, one and one. Warm day here this afternoon as we've warmed up to 82 degrees. It was 79 at first pitch. Broderick's 1-1 to Zutenhorst, and the two-seamer is low down below the knees. Trying to strand a couple of runners on here in the third. Stompers leading 7-2. A little bit of a breeze blowing from right to left, but not much. Broderick's 2-1 delivery, and Zutenhorst laid on the fastball. Two balls in, two strikes to count. Broderick, not a guy that will throw the fastball by you, but it does have plenty of movement with that high three-quarter release from the right-hander. It also gives him that extra movement on the slider. Hasn't had the utmost confidence in it today, but if he threw a back foot slider here to Zutenhorst, the Hall of Fame pitch, they call it. If you can throw that backdoor slider to the opposite-handed hitter, the 2-2. A slider popped up on the infield. Molinari out in front of home plate. He rids of the mask. Standing on home plate, he'll make the catch. Broderick gets Zutenhorst to pop up to Molinari to end the inning. No runs on no hit. Salinas strands two will go to the stopper half of the third inning. Jacob Barfield will lead us off with the stoppers leading 7-2. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice.
Jacob Barfield leads us off, bottom of the third inning, 7-2 stopper lead against Eric Galise, and he checks his swing in the first pinch and fouls it straight down on top of home plate. 38 pitches for Gleese in that second inning. Couple of walks, three home runs, four hits. Here's his own one pitch to Barfield, and that breaking ball is topped foul along third. Nothing into the count on Barfield. He hit his 13th home run in that second inning, a two-run shot. The Stompers, three two-run home runs in the second to jump out to the 7-2 to two lead. It's Barfield, Kern, and Molinari here in the third inning, and that 0-2 breaking ball, a good one from Glee. Swung on and missed by Barfield. Second strike out of the ball game for Glee, so one away here in the third. We're here tomorrow, everybody. Yeah, that's right, one of two Monday games here this year. This one's scheduled. 6.05 against the Napa Silver Rounds. The other one, the very last game of the year. That's Monday, August 26th. That game, of course, rescheduled after the irrigation issue we had here, and we played a home run derby against Vallejo instead. First pitch to Nick Kern. On the outside corner, called a strike. Kern walked and scored in the second. Scored on the wild pitch. The 0 1. Hits it in the air to right here. Going back on in his night. He'll settle down and have plenty of room to make the catch two out. Two quick outs for Gleese here in the third inning, and Daniel Molinari is going to come up. Molinari was the first out in that second inning when he hit a fly ball to center. Remember that day, the home run derby day? Vallejo won the home run derby, actually. It was. Jacob Wark, the big lefty that outdueled home run leader Dondre Hubbard at the time. It was a fun night. You improvise. We had fun. The fans had fun. That's all you can ask for. And we're still going to play that game on Monday, August 26th. Molinari stands in. Here comes the first pitch to him from Eric Gleese. And he taps it on the ground softly to short a high. Bouncer Martini fields on two hops. The throw to first. Pulls Canelo off the bag. The swipe tag misses Molinari. An error by the shortstop, Luis Martini, on the throw to first, pulling Canelo off the bag. First error of the ball game. Make that the second error of the ball game. The other one was on Gelfman at third. You remember that play? The pop-up in foul territory, he was granted an error. A tough error to give him, mind you. So the second error for Salina, both on the left side of the infield. And the inning extends for Race and Romero. Man, Gleese was so close to having a much-needed 1-2-3 inning. Molinari's at first base, the first pinch to race in Romero. He takes his strike at the knees. Romero singled, stole a base, and scored back in the second. Boy, who didn't score in the second inning? Molinari didn't score, and Quitzer didn't score. Only two stompers not to score in that second inning. Here's the 0-1 from Gleese, and the breaking ball to Romero catches the outside black. No balls, two strikes. Gleese way ahead of Romero. Out of the stretch comes Eric Gleese on nothing and two. Molinari goes and Romero hits it to right center field. Slicing away from Bishop. That'll split the gap. Here comes Molinari. He's being waved around third and now Zach Pace will hold him up. Racing Romero doubles to right center field. A two out base hit and the Stompers have second and third. It kept slicing away from Bishop. It started right at the center fielder and just kept slicing and slicing away from him before it split the gap for a double, and Molinari was hustling. He was running on the pitch, held up at third. Thinking, why not just send them and see if they can put together a good relay? Well, here's why. Nick Gata is coming to the plate now, the leadoff man. He's the toughest out in the league. First pitch to him from Glees, slowing away, ball one. Gata to boot, a two-run home run his last time up the other way off of Gleese on a 2-0 count. On-base percentage over 550. 
for Gata's second best hitter in the league at 366, behind only San Rafael's Raul Navarro. 1 0 pitch to Gata misses inside from the fastball. Um, Glees, and it's 2 0. Gotta be looking for a pitch here to hit. A 2 0 two run home run, his last time up. He has Molinari at third and Romero out at second. Here's the 2 0 from Glees. Outside, 3 0. The error extended the inning on Martini at short, the throwing error. Romero doubled. The 3 0 pitch coming from Eric Gleeks. Here it is to Gata. And that's low for ball four. Fourth walk given up by Gleeks. Gata's 60th walk of the season. Can you believe that? 60 walks. Today, game number 47. Here's Matt Hibbert with the bases loaded in two out. Trying to bring in some runs here in the third and extend this 7-2 lead. Walked and scored in the second inning. Hibbert with just one RBI in his first five games. The first pitch from Gleese. Swinging at the first pitch, he pops it up, foul territory, first base side, Canelo racing over, and it falls in front of the stopper dugout. Strike one on Matt Hibbert. After a four-pitch walk to Nick Gata, the inning opened with a strikeout and then a fly ball to right. The error, the double, and the walk have loaded the bases. Gleese working from the stretch with the bases loaded and two out. Here's his 0-1 delivery to Hibbert, and that's all the way to the backstop, and Molinari stays put at third base. Gleese missed everybody. It hit the backstop and bounced right back to Nick Krause. One ball and one strike on Matt Hibbert. One and one, the pitch from Gleese. And Hibbert taps it foul up the third baseline. The count moves to one and two. <laughs> Hibbert digging back in right side, the speedy center fielder. Stompers all over the bases with two out in the third. Gleese laboring here in this third inning. Should have been out of it on the ground ball to Molinari. Instead having to face three extra batters. Seven runs against him in the second inning. Six of them earned. And he runs this inning. Going to be unearned for Gleese. On one and two to Hibbert, the pitch. That's outside. It goes all the way to the backstop again. And the Stompers will just stay put on the bases. Two balls, two strikes, two out, bases loaded, and Hibbert with a chance to break this thing open here in the third. The veteran stomper waits the 2-2 pitch. Here it is, and that's outside, and he's worked the count full. 0-2-3-2 for Hibbert. Chris Quintzer. Is on deck. Big bats coming up following Hibbert if he could reach. The runners will get a head start. Molinari at third, Romero at second, Gata at first. The payoff from Eric Gleese fouled away. Seventh pitch of the in bat coming up. The longest at bat against Gleese in the ball game. Quitzer had a seven pitch at bat back in the first inning and worked a walk. Three balls and two strikes. Hibbert climbs back in the right handed batter's box. Kraus delivers the sign to Gleese, still working from the stretch. 
Runners go. Here's the payoff pitch, and Hibbert's down on strikes. Stoppers load the bases. Can't score. We'll go to the fourth innings. It's the Stoppers, seven, the Stockade, two. Bottom third of the lineup coming up. You're a bridge builder, a connector, a people person. You make every moment count, and you know how to count every moment. You know people who are going places, and you help them get there. California's business is your business. You specialize in special, and we specialize in your specialty. No matter what your background is or where you want to go, at Nelson, every day is a great day for a first day. Connect with a Nelson recruiter in your city to start working on putting your next first day on the calendar. Nelson, our talent is finding yours. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. We enter the fourth inning with the Stompers leading 7-2. Ryan Rodriguez leads things off against Joseph Broderick, and his first pitch to the right-handed hitter is inside for ball one. This is the part of the order that got it done against Broderick in the second inning when Rodriguez singled, and then Nick Krause, who's on deck, hit his third home run of the season. The 1-0 pitch from Broderick is high and away. 2-0 the count. That pitch number 70 for Broderick here to open the fourth inning, so I think maybe Broderick will get for maybe five innings in today. He's hoping he gets five. He wants to qualify for the win here this afternoon as his 2-0 catches the high outside corner to Rodriguez, 2-1. Need to go five to get his fourth win here today if the score were to hold. 7-2 right now. Here's his 2-1 to Rodriguez, and that's inside ball three. Single and a run scored for Rodriguez. Five-run stomper lead Broderick's 3-1, and Rodriguez fouls it back to the screen. Broderick's had to go with more fastballs here today than he would particularly like to in a normal start, given that he's been behind the count here today and trying to work his way back. The high pitch count indicates that. His 73rd pitch of the afternoon on 3-2 to Rodriguez is low ball four. Second inning in a row that Broderick has allowed a leadoff walk. 4 walks in the game for Broderick. Here's Kraus, the two-run home run, his last time up. Demolished a baseball to left center field. His third home run, his 10th and 11th runs batted in, so Rodriguez leads from first after the walk to open the inning, and Kraus squares around, pops the bunch straight up and straight back and out of play. Oh, and one on the catcher, Nick Kraus. Couldn't ask for a more perfect day here today. A little bit warmer than anticipated. No breeze, it's just still out there on the field. Here comes the 0-1 from Broderick. Kraus squares around and takes a slider high this time. One and one, the counts of Kraus, who... Absolutely annihilated a home run his last time up, squaring around here in the fourth inning, trying to get on base, 
Quitzer at third base, plays behind the bag, now starts to creep in, still creeping. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Krause does not square around. He fouls the pitch away. So with two strikes now, Quitzer won't have to worry. Oh, if we were in the Atlantic League, he may have to worry. And the new rules implemented in the Atlantic League this year, one of the four, the rule where you get two attempts to bunt with two strikes. First one, no penalty. You get a second try. Of course, here and in the rest of baseball, you only get one attempt. And if you bunt it foul, you're out. But Krause swings and misses at the Joseph Broderick slider. The first strikeout on the slider for Broderick in the game, his fourth overall. One away. And here's Johnny Knight. In the Atlantic League, also pitchers to pick over to a base, you have to step off the rubber. One of the rules, and of course, stealing first. The most intriguing rule out of all of them is Johnny Knight swings and misses for strike one. Oh, and one the count on Johnny Knight, the right-handed hitter. He takes a fastball high from Broderick. It's one and one. Stepping off the rubber, the second bunt attempt with two strikes. The stealing first base is really the one that had everybody up in a in a frenzy. You've seen it. Seen it one time at least. Here's the one one to nine. He takes a fastball high from Broderick Ball two. So back to that stealing first. The way that the rule reads is any ball not caught in flight by the catcher warrants the base runner an opportunity to take, to take first base. And basically, you can just take off. Interesting, huh? The 2 1. Swung on and missed 2 and 2. So, yeah, it could be the first pitch of the game, first pitch of the at bat. It could be. 3-1, 3-0, any count, it doesn't matter. If the catcher does not catch it on a fly, it's basically a dropped third strike in any count. And it's happened. Here comes the 2-2. Slider misses low and away. One of the better two-strike sliders that Broderick has thrown in the ball game, and an even better take by Johnny Knight. Knight walked his first time up and was thrown out trying to score on a Cody Bishop double in the second inning. That ended the second inning. Three and two, the count with a man at first and one out. Here's the pinch from Broderick, and that's outside ball four. Five walks in the game for Broderick, two here in this fourth inning. First and second with one out for Bishop, who doubled to right his last time up. It went all the way to the wall. At first base on that play was Johnny Knight, and Miles Williams threw into second base, and Knight just kept running around third, and Romero spun and threw him out at home. First pitch from Broderick, and Bishop hits it high down the right field line. That'll hook foul. Didn't have enough to get out of the ballpark. Bishop got it down toward the end of the bat. Off the bat, the... Angle looked like it may have had a chance. It just kept hooking, and Bishop never started to run, so that's a tell right there. The hitter doesn't start to run. It's going to be foul. Just how far is he going to go, and how foul will it be? Rodriguez at second, Knight over at first. They've both walked in the inning, one out. Broderick, a long pause. Now his nothing in one pitch, and Bishop flares it in the air to left. Jacob Barfield settles underneath it. He makes the catch, two out. So Broderick could pitch away from stranding a couple of base runners once again. And the man standing between him and a clean fourth inning, the shortstop, Luis Martini. Martini's got a beard going. The season starting, he didn't have a beard. That's a, that's a thick beard on the Salina shortstop. I mean, one of the best ones in the league, I think you can say by far. 
Roderick starts in with a slider that misses outside, ball one. Baseball and beards, they just kind of go together like hot dogs and apple pie. And Chevrolet, that's how it goes, right? Roderick's 1-0 pinch coming to Martini. He takes a fastball down low ball two. Broderick has fallen behind in the fourth inning. Two on and two out. The 2-0 delivery to Martini. Two-seamer tails onto the inside corner for strike one. Martini has some pop, eight home runs. 30 driven in. Chance to put a couple more on the board here in the fourth inning. Broderick's 2-1 pitch to him, and Martini cuts on and misses. Good fastball from Broderick that time on the outside corner threw it by him. Two and two with two on and two out. Goes from O'Canella on deck, the slugging first baseman. Broderick trying to escape this fourth and get his team back in the dugout. He lifts the leg and deals on 2-2, and Martini fouls off a slider. Martini putting up a fight, and one of the better sliders that Broderick has thrown in the game. Out in front, but able to get a piece on it. We'll do the 2-2 over again. Broderick at the chest. He looks to second. Now comes home. The pitch is outside, and the count is full. Third full count in the inning against Broderick. Eighth full count of the game. Runners will get a head start with two out. Here comes the payoff pitch, and that's high and in ball four. Broderick has walked Martini for the second time in the game, and he's walked the bases loaded here in the fourth. Canella's going to come to the plate, and a man that has plenty of power to really make this thing a ball game again, and that'll warrant a visit from pitching coach Mike Nunes. So the inning started with a Rodriguez walk, then Krause struck out. Knight walked, Bishop fly to left, and now Martini has loaded the bases with a walk. Nobody up in either bullpen. The pitch count very high for Joseph Broderick. Entered the inning with 68. Up near 90 now. Mike Nunez is going to come out, and they're going to discuss how he's going to Face Cosimo Canella, who has reached both times a single and a fielder's choice. We're back in action tomorrow after the Sunday day game here today. The first pitch tomorrow will be at 6.05. That's against the Napa Silverados. The third time the Stompers are going to play the Silverados in the last five games. Snap the three-game losing streak to Napa a couple of nights ago with a 7-6 walk-off win. And then beat them last night, 10 to four, powering their way. With eight runs in the sixth and seventh innings combined. Mountain visits over between Nunez, Broderick, and Molinari. Everybody back to their positions, and Cosimo Canella will step in. Five home runs in 21 runs batted in on the season for Canella. We've seen him hit one of the furthest balls in this ballpark this year. He and Brent Gillespie both have one-hopped the center field wall here this year that sits 435 feet away. Bases loaded, two out. Broderick working from the stretch, his first pitch to Canella, and that's low and away. Things are going to get interesting here in the fourth inning. Broderick trying to find the strike zone. Nowhere to put Canella with the bases loaded. Trying to keep Salina off the board here in the fourth inning. The 1 0 pitch, and Canella takes outside, ball two. Cosimo yet to be retired in the game here this afternoon. They're straight away in the outfield against him. They're deep on the left side of the infield. Broderick's 2 0 pitch, outside, ball three. Now in danger of walking in a run here in the fourth inning. 
Doesn't want to walk in a run, but you don't want to give Canella a cookie right down the middle either. Three balls, no strikes. The pitch from Broderick right down the middle. Canella took it, and he knew it. Maybe the best pitch he'll get all game to hit from Joseph Broderick. Three and one. Broderick's going to step off now, retow the rubber from the third base side, trying to get in some sort of a rhythm. The 3 1 delivery. High ball four. He's walked in a run, and it's seven to three. Four walks in the inning. I've driven in a run, the 22nd RBI for Cosimo Canella. Rodriguez scores from third on the walk. And Broderick now desperately trying to end this fourth inning without giving up any further damage. Gelfman's 0 for 1. He lined out and walked. And Broderick starts him with a strike on the outside corner of the two-seamer. No balls in a strike. And Broderick has gotten ahead. Right-hander up in the stomper bullpen now throwing. That is Willie Ethington. The 0-1 pitch to Zane Gelfman. Fly down to play down the right field line. And now Broderick is way ahead 0-2. Four strikeouts in the game. Seven walks for Joseph Broderick. Looking for his fifth strikeout. And a desperate third out here in the fourth. Way ahead of him, nothing in two. Maybe go with the slider, the 0-2 pitch. The slider is taken outside. Could even stick with the slider for the next pitch and maybe even a third in a row to Zane Gelfman. The slider's that good, even though that he hasn't had full confidence in it today. Still the best swing and miss pitch he has, and it works well on right on right against Gelfman. The pitch just keeps working itself away from Gelfman. Molinari sets up. Now Broderick's 1-2. The slider popped up and out of play. Will he throw it a third time, though? That's the question. Gelfman took one, fouled the other off. You always have the option of the high fastball, but if you don't get it up high enough, Gelfman with 13 home runs could potentially tie the game. The 1-2 again from Broderick. Downhill, here's the pitch. The slider fouled off. That one hung up in the strike zone, and Broderick should feel lucky. Letter high slider right down the middle, and Gelfman only able to get a piece of it. Still 1-2 with the bases loaded and two out. Canella walked to drive in a run to make it 7-3. to three. Now Gelfman calls time and he steps out. Biggest at bat against Broderick, possibly his last hitter of the game. On one and two. He looks to second, now fires the pitch, is taken outside. He went back to the slider. Really not close to that outside corner. Just trying to get Gelfman to reach for it and a good tank, two and two. Straight away in the outfield against Gelfman, the right-handed hitter. Broderick at the chest, he's set. The two-two coming on the ground, right to Broderick on one hop. He'll trot over and underhand to Gillespie. That ends the inning. Salina scores once on the RBI walk from Cosimo Canella. We'll go to the home half of the fourth. Quitzer, Gillespie, and Williams with the Stompers leading 7-3. North Bay Credit Union is proud to be part of Sonoma County's home team. We're your progressive alternative to big banks, delivering a full roster of great banking services, but at much lower costs. Our lineup always hits it out of the park. Auto loans, home loans, manufactured home loans, and 100% free checking that pays you back. We're equally proud to support lots of local groups, including the Sonoma Stompers, because that's what neighbors do. 
We're the home of league-leading Casasa Checking. Casasa Checking is better than free. It pays you, and you choose how you want to be rewarded. Bonus dividends on your deposits or cash back on your debit card purchases. And Casasa makes any ATM a free ATM. It's easy to switch to Casasa in just minutes at NorthBayCU.com. Our convenient branches are just a short stop from anywhere, including our newest Sonoma Valley and Rohnert Park locations. Don't let banks throw curveballs at your budget with high rates and foul fees. Count on North Bay Credit Union to save you money every day. Learn more at NorthBayCU.com or call 707-584-0384. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Chris Quitzer leads us off in the stomper half of the fourth inning in a 7-3 ball game. He takes low and away from Eric Gleese here to open the bat, and the count is 1-0. Big bats, 3-4-5, Quitzer, Gillespie, and Williams. The 1-0 pitch is tapped on top of home plate. One ball and one strike. That was pitch 80 from Eric Gleese. Joseph Broderick has 105 through four innings, so his day is likely over. And unfortunately for Broderick, with the score at 7-3 stoppers, he will not be in line for the win here today. Here's the 1-1, one, one, and Quitzer chases a fastball low and away, 1-2. and Got to throw five innings to be in line for the win, and Broderick just too many pitches here today. And a season-high seven walks. 1-2 and two the count. Martini's up the middle at short, and Gelfman's well off the line at third. 1-2 pitch to Quincer. He taps it softly up the third baseline. That's going to roll and stay fair. Chris Quitzer, not the way he drew it up, but it works with Gelfman playing way off the line at third. Quitzer was way out in front, tapped it off the end of the bat, softly up the third baseline. It only traveled 85 feet before Gelfman got it, and he had no shot to retire Quitzer. So he has a base hit. And all Quitzer can do over at first base is grin. Like, are you kidding me? I'll take that. Here's Brent Gillespie. A two-run home run for Gillespie his last time up. Two straight games with a home run for the left-hander. Make that three straight games for him. First pinch from Eric Gleese misses down low. One ball and no strikes. He homered in San Rafael two nights ago. Homered last night. And, of course, the two-run here today. In the second inning when the Stompers hit three two-run home runs. Quits are at first base, nobody out. Gleese is 1-0. It's outside and low. A change up to Gillespie. Two balls and no strikes. So it's Willie Ethington getting ready, and he'll likely have the top of the fifth inning. With Broderick at 105 through four innings. The 2-0. Gillespie hits it in the air, high to center. Bishop racing over toward the left center field. Gap makes the catch on the track. So Gillespie hits it well, and it slices over toward left center, but it stays in play for Cody Bishop for out number one. Here's Miles Williams. Hit by a pinch, and he's grounded to short. The average at 259. He's reached in 24 of his last 25. First pitch to him, he pops the fastball straight back and into the crowd. Nothing in one the count on Miles Williams. Nine home runs, 31 runs batted in and still trying to get going. Spinning a throw to first, Quitzer back with a head first dive. Chris Quitzer on the season, just one stolen base. Stompers with two stolen bases in the ballgame here today as a team. Quitzer goes, the 0-1. Curveball misses inside. The throw to second is not in time. So, of course, when you talk about 
Just the one stolen base for Chris Quitzer. And he takes second. His second stolen base of the year. Williams almost hit for the second time in the game on that breaking ball from Eric Gleese. It stayed inside and never broke, just kept spinning. The county is one and one. Puts her at second to pitch. Swung on and fouled off by Williams. One and two. Stompers two for three with men in scoring position in the ball game here today. Williams a 255 average with men in scoring position on the year. Stompers as a team. 297. It's 14 points higher than their overall team batting average. The 1 2. Breaking ball hits sky high to left. If it's fair, it's gone. Right over the foul pole for Miles Williams, 10th home run of the season. I mean, right over the top of the foul pool down the left field line. It had the distance. Was it going to stay fair? And Williams keeps it fair. The fourth two-run home run of the game for the Stompers. It's 9-3. to three. That home run brought to you by Epicenter. Make your next family adventure an epic one. At epicenter, Williams hits his 10th. He now has 33 runs batted in. And with the bases empty and one out, Jacob Barfield's going to come up. He has a two-run home run in the game as well. So it's 9-3. to three. Barfield, the right-handed hitter, stands in. The first pitch from Eric Gleitz is outside with a fastball. Barfield one for two with the two-run home run and a strikeout. The 1-0 pitch. Swung on and missed. Boy, Gleese reached back for a little bit extra there. Threw it right by Barfield. One ball, one strike on the stopper left fielder here today. Here's the pitch. On the outside corner to Barfield for strike two. A massive display of power here this week for the stompers. Four home runs today. Three last night. Barfield hits it sharply on the ground to short. Martini fields on one knee. He'll throw to first, and that's offline, but Cosimo Canella able to come off the bag this time to tag Jacob Barfield for the second out. And then when you go back to two nights ago in San Rafael, of course, the Gillespie Grand Slam and the Quitzer two-run home run. Nine home runs in the last three games. And this man has one, Nick Kern. Went deep last night against his former team, the Napa Silverados. First pitch to him from Eric Gleese. Hits it softly up the line at third, backing up on it, Zach Pace, and he'll chase the foul ball. Nothing in one on Kern. Just one home run on the season, and he, boy, did he destroy it last night. Off the scoreboard in left center. The 0 1 pitch outside to Kern, 1 and 1. It's been everybody. Gata, Quitzer, Gillespie, Williams, Barfield, Kern, who fouls away the 1 1 pitch. It hasn't been one guy. It's been one through nine, which is scary when you are an opposing team coming to this ballpark. The 1 2 to Kern, he takes a change up down low, they appeal, and he did not go around, says Dean Poteet. Count evens up at two balls and two strikes on Kern, the right-handed hitter. He's the DH today. 2-2 two -two pitch, he takes high, and the count is full. Daniel Molinari in the on-deck circle, and Eric Gleese is going to take a little short walk behind the mound, now scale the back side of the hill. Standing on top of the rubber now, he looks into the catcher, Nick Krause, and he deals on three and two to Nick Kern, and that is high and away, ball four. Fifth walk allowed by Gleese after masterful pitching from both sides last night. And what we mean by that, 
25 strikeouts combined in the game last night and five walks. Here today, 12 walks and seven strikeouts. So really the polar opposite of what we had last night. And the stoppers who lead the league in walks allowed as far as pitching is concerned. They also lead the league in walks offensively. Salina has allowed the most walks as a pitching staff. Here's the first pitch to Daniel Molinari. That is way outside for ball one. Molinari 0 for 2 in the game. He's flying to center and he reached on an error by Martini at short. Couple of runs here in the fourth. The Miles Williams two run home run to make it 9 to 3. Ethington waiting patiently down in the stopper bullpen and now Nick Kern is picked off. He was running on the play. The throw to second, and they got him. So Kern picked off to end the inning. That'll go down 1-3-6. And we'll go to the fifth. Stoppers lead 9-3. North Bay Credit Union is proud to be part of Sonoma County's home team. We're your progressive alternative to big banks, delivering a full roster of great banking services, but at much lower costs. Our lineup always hits it out of the park. Auto loans, home loans, manufactured home loans, and 100% free checking that pays you back. We're equally proud to support lots of local groups, including the Sonoma Stompers, because that's what neighbors do. We're the home of league-leading Casasa Checking. Casasa Checking is better than free. It pays you, and you choose how you want to be rewarded. Bonus dividends on your deposits, or cash back on your debit card purchases. And Casasa makes any ATM a free ATM. It's easy to switch to Casasa in just minutes at NorthBayCU.com. Our convenient branches are just a short stop from anywhere, including our newest Sonoma Valley and Rohnert Park locations. Don't let banks throw curveballs at your budget with high rates and foul fees. Count on North Bay Credit Union to save you money every day. Learn more at NorthBayCU.com or call 707-584-584. Loans subject to approval. Details at NorthBayCU.com. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Willie Ethington is on for the Stompers here in the top of the fifth inning. He'll face Artson, Zutenhorst, and Rodriguez, and he misses high to start this top of the fifth. One ball and no strike. So Joseph Broderick goes four innings, allows three runs on five hits, strikes out four, and walks seven. So Ethington from the stretch. He throws a fastball right by Omar Artson. The count is one and one. Ethington, the 6'3 right-hander from Mesa, Arizona. Enters the ball game 3 and 0 oh, with a 5.63 ERA. The 1-1 one, one to Artson. Swung on and missed. 1 and 2 the count. Ethington in 24 innings has allowed 15 earned runs on 27 hits. He struck out 15 and walked 11. One and two, the pinch from Ethington to Artson. A fastball, first strike, three at the knees. <laughs> Ethington comes out of the bullpen and strikes out Artson for the third time today. Artson has the hat trick all looking. Can I help you? No, thanks. 
Just looking today. One out, nobody on for Taylor Zutenhorst. First pitch to him from Ethington. He starts him with a fastball, and Zutenhorst pops it out of play. We're in the fifth and a 9-3 stopper lead. Miles Williams is 10th home run of the season in the bottom half of the fourth inning. He just did keep it fair down the left field line. Now the 0-1 from Ethington is inside by inches to Zutenhorst 1-1. One one. It went right over the top of the foul pole down the left field line. And he had no room to breathe. Able to keep it true, though, down that left field line. Here's the 1-1, one, one, and Ethington misses in the dirt. Zutenhorst in the ballgame is 1-2. for two. He singled sharply off the left field wall his first time up. I mean, he smoked it. And Barfield played the carom and threw him out at second by about 45 feet. I mean, to the point where Zutenhorst just stopped and said, here you go. The 2-1. Inside, 3-1. and one. Ethington, who was in the Boston Red Sox farm system for three seasons. Rookie ball in low A. He was a 17th round pick out of high school in 2012. Out of Mountain View High School in Mesa, Arizona, his hometown. The 3-1 pitch, and Zutenhorst cannot hold up the swing. He goes around 3-2. and two. Ryan Rodriguez waits on deck. The count full on Zutenhorst with nobody on and one out. Straight away for Zutenhorst, the left-handed hitter. The payoff coming. That's hit in the air to left. Barfield moving back and toward the line. It's slicing away. He's on the track, and he makes the catch. Right in front of the left field wall, right in front of the 320 side. Two away, and here is Rodriguez. He's reached both times, singled, and walked, scored both of those times. Rodriguez, the big, tall left fielder. Base is empty and two away against Willie Ethington. Stompers only needed to use two relievers last night, and Rodriguez on loads. His first home run of the season, it disappears into the trees, and it's 9-4. to four. My goodness, the ball is flying here today. My goodness. Stompers have four home runs in the game. Salina with two home runs in the game. And every single home run has been destroyed. First home run for Ryan Rodriguez. So now a five-run ball game. It's 9-4. to four. And for Willie Ethington... The reliever in his 16th appearance. The fifth home run he's given up. First pitch to Nick Kraus. A bit high and in for ball one. Kraus had the first Salina home run. That was a two-run home run back in the second inning, his third of the year. Ethington trying to shake off the solo shot, and he delivers on 1-0, and and Kraus takes high for ball two. Kraus, right-handed batter. Ethington, after getting two quick outs, he struck out Arntzen looking, and then Zutenhorst fly to left. The 2-0. Outside, ball three. Rodriguez unloaded on the first pinch he saw. Ethington's going to take a quick walk. Trying to avoid his first walk of the game. His first inning of relief out of the pen. The 3 0 delivery to Kraus. Tie ball four. Four pinch walk following the home run. Johnny Knight's going to hit. Knight has walked a pair of times in the ballgame. Molinari goes out and he'll talk to his right-hander. A 25-year-old right-hander. Arizona kid. 
Trying to shank off the home run and the walk. A little bit shell-shocked. It's 9-4 stompers, top of the fifth inning. Ethington's first pitch to Johnny Knight, lined right back up the middle into center field for a base hit. Around second, Krause, he'll head to third. The throw from Hibbert is going to be offline. A single for Johnny Knight, his first hit. Krause goes first to third on the single. Salina has him at the corners for the leadoff man, Cody Bishop. Bishop has a double in the game. He's one for three. Bishop with eight home runs, and well, Salina just hanging around, keeping themselves one swing away from making this a tight game again. First pitch to Cody Bishop from Willie Ethington is high and away, one ball and no strikes. So Ethington's been hit hard this inning, both on the first pitch of the at bat, the home run, and then the ninth single. Here comes the 1-0. Bishop fouls it straight back. It caught a piece of the glove of Daniel Molinari, 1-1. One and one. Solo home run, a walk, a base hit. So we check on the game over in Napa. The Admirals lead the Silverado 6-3 in the top of the fifth inning. Vallejo trying to win their sixth in a row and hand Napa their fourth straight loss. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Bishop, and he flies it out of play down the left field line. Johnny Knight at first had a healthy lead. You know, a really big lead over at first. Ethington solely focusing on the hitter here, trying to end this top of the fifth. A little bit of wind blowing from right to left. Here's the 1-2, and Bishop chases a changeup. Pair of strikeouts for Ethington in the inning. He does allow the solo home run to Ryan Rodriguez. Well, halfway home here today as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Stoppers lead. Nine to four. Stoppers baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case, PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. New pitcher for Salina here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Right-hander Ridge Ackerman making his seventh appearance. 
with a 9.88 ERA. 23 and two thirds innings for him. 26 earned runs on 32 hits. He struck out 24 and walked 19. Aaron Sheeks has come into the game. He'll play second base for Salina and Ackerman deals outside to Daniel Molinari, one and oh. So Aaron Sheeks comes in, he plays at second base. So Mark Artson moves from second to short. And Luis Martini is now out of the game. One ball and one strike as Molinari fouls off that pinch here in the bottom of the fifth. So Eric Gleese goes four innings, allows nine runs, eight earned on seven hits. He walks five and strikes out three and gives way to Ridge Ackerman. His 1-1 one, one to Molinari fouled back to the screen. 100 pinches even for Eric Gleese in four innings. So some defensive changes. Martini's out of the game. Sheeks comes into second, and Artson goes from second to short. One ball and two strikes on Daniel Molinari. He'll be followed by Racing Romero, and then Nick Gata, 8-9-1 here in the fifth. Ackerman works out of the windup. His 1-2 pitch, and that slider misses outside and low to Molinari, 2-2. Two and two. They're in the bottom of the fifth inning over in Napa in a 6-3 Vallejo lead. Two and two on Molinari. Here's the pitch, and he chases a breaking ball for strike three. Tremendous breaking ball from Ridge Ackerman. It sent Molinari down to one knee. Strike out for the first down, and Racing Romero will come to the plate. He's two for two. Singled, stole a base, and scored in the second, and then he doubled the right center in the third. First time against Ridge Ackerman. First pitch to Racing Romero. He takes a fastball down the middle for strike one. Ackerman, the 6-2 right-hander from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Ahead of Romero, nothing in one. Here comes the 0-1 pitch, and Romero takes a called strike on the outside corner, nothing in two, as he turns around and says, is that the out, as far out as it'll go? Nothing in two pitch from Ackerman to Romero. That's a little bit outside this time. Ball one on Romero. The count is one and two. So Gleese, after his best start of the season, the last time he faced the Stompers, lasts just four innings here today. Ackerman's 1-2, and Romero sprays it foul off to the right. Remember, Gleese went the first four innings without giving up a hit last time he faced the Stompers. Still one and two, here's the pinch from Ackerman. And that breaking ball has popped up and that'll reach the seats. One ball, two strikes still on Romero. Here's the pinch from Ackerman, and he hits it high to left. Rodriguez raises the glove a couple of feet in front of the wall. He reaches up and makes the catch. Nick Gata will come to the plate. He is one for two, a two-run home run in the second. He walked in the third. Left-handed hitter against Ackerman. He takes strike one on the outside corner. So Ackerman's come into the game, and he's going to try and quiet the stomper offense that scored seven times in the second and twice in the fourth to get out to this 9-4 to four lead. Here's the 0-1, and Gata takes low. One ball in, one strike on Gata, the left-handed hitting second baseman. He was the DH last night. Back in the field here today. He awaits the 1-1, one, one, and here it comes, and he chases a high fastball and got a, with one of the biggest swings we've seen out of him this year. Boy, did his eyes get big there. 
trying to knock his second home run of the game. He has four on the season. Ackerman agrees with Kraus, starts the wind up, he kicks the one two pitch and got a waves on a changeup that just kept tailing away. A one two three fifth inning for Ridge Ackerman with a pair of strikeouts will go to the six and the stoppers are on top nine to four. You're a bridge builder, a connector, a people person. You make every moment count, and you know how to count every moment. You know people who are going places, and you help them get there. California's business is your business. You specialize in special, and we specialize in your specialty. No matter what your background is, or where you want to go, at Nelson, every day is a great day for a first day. Connect with a Nelson recruiter in your city to start working on putting your next first day on the calendar. Nelson, our talent is finding yours. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Aaron Sheeks is going to pinch hit. He came in defensively in the top half of the inning to play second base, so the day is over for Luis Martini. He'll face Willie Ethington from the stretch, and that is high and in and almost up near the head of Sheeks for ball one. Martini ends the game with two walks and a strikeout. So it's Sheeks, Canella, and Gelfman here in the top of the sixth inning with the Stompers leading. Nine to four. Sheik's batting at 071 coming in, and Ethington deals high ball two. And with a guy hitting 071, you're thinking, man, just throw him something right down the middle. Doesn't have a home run or an RBI in the season. Sheik's has appeared just making 14 at bats on the season up until this point. The 2 0 from Ethington is swung on and missed. Oh, we've seen Sheik's out of the bullpen. One of the better relievers. He has 13 and two thirds innings pitch with a 3.95 ERA. One of the best ERAs on this team. Two way guy. Batting for Martini here in the sixth, and Ethington's 2 1 is down low. You think, man, he, he's hitting below 100. Just throw him something right down the middle. It's not that easy. If it were that easy, we'd do it, right? Here comes the 3-1, and Sheeks takes on the outside corner, and the count is full. And Ron Adams punched him out, but he's going to say, no, 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 my bad. It's only two strikes. Count is full on Sheeks, the 2-3-4 spots against Ethington in the sixth. Right-hander deals the payoff, swung on and missed. 
Third strikeout for Willie Ethington in an inning and a third. Here's Cosimo Canale. He's reached all three times. The throw down went into left field. Why? Molinari <laughs> threw down to Quitzer, who's now giving him some grief down at third. Throwing it around after the strikeout, he threw it into left. Here's the first pitch to Canella, and he takes a fastball from Ethington a little bit high. Canella one for two singled. He reached on a fielder's choice and walked and drove in a run in the fourth inning. Ethington's 1-0 delivery, and Canella hits it to left center field. He drops the bat. A solo home run for Cosimo Canella, and it's 9-5. Canella's sixth home run of the season. The second that Ethington has allowed in the last two innings. Now just a four-run ball game here in the sixth. Baseballs are flying out of the yard here today. Third home run of the game for the Stockade. The Stompers have four. So here's Zane Gelfman 0 for 2 with a walk in the game. Gelfman hit with the bases loaded in the fourth inning and bounced right back to Joseph Broderick, the last man that Broderick faced in the game. A couple of home runs off of Ethington in two innings. He starts Gelfman with a tailing fastball that goes in on the hands of Gelfman. He swings over the top. The count is nothing and one. Two relievers used last night. Ethan Gibbons pitched two innings, and then Ryan Richardson, a 1 2 3 ninth. Here's the 0 1. And that brilliant curveball from Ethington swung on and missed. Well, that's one of the best breaking balls we've seen thrown today. Ethington, well, if you could throw a better one than that, it'd be impressive. Great movement top to bottom. A little bit laterally, here's his 0-2 to Gelfman, and he goes back to the breaking ball this one. He spikes in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. Gelfman, the cleanup man, following the Canela solo home run. One and two, Gelfman, the right-handed hitter. The pitch from Ethington, low with a fastball, two and two. Omar Artson is on deck for Salina. He has three strikeouts in the ball game. Now the count two and two on Gelfman. Strikeout open the inning, then Canella hit his sixth home run. The 2-2 two -two pitch is outside and low, and the count is full. Napa inching their way closer against the Admirals. They're in the sixth inning in a 6-4 Admiral lead. The payoff pitch to Gelfman yanked down the left field line foul. Vallejo was out to an early lead in that game. They led at 1.6-1. We'll have another payoff pitch from El Willie Ethington to Zane Gelfman with nobody on and one out. 9-5 Stompers lead top of the six. The payoff pitch coming, and that is very high. And inside to Gelfman, a one-out walk. Here comes Omar Artson. Artson has struck out looking three times today. Right-handed hitter started the day at second base, and then when Aaron Sheeks came in, in the bottom half of the fifth inning, Artson moved over to shortstop. The first pitch from Ethington on the inside corner swung on and missed. Nothing in one, Arts in the right-handed hitter. Here's the pinch from Ethington. Fastball misses high. 
Kelfman leads from first with one out. It's Barfield, Hibbert, Williams in the outfield. Quitzer, Romero, Gata, and Gillespie. Around the infield, Gillespie holding on the runner over at first. Molinari sets the target. Here's the 1-1 pitch, and that breaking ball bends a little bit too low. Two balls and a strike on Artson, who hasn't put the bat on the ball today. Ethington working from behind. The right-hander's 2-1, and the fastball is taken low. Three balls and one strike on Omar Artson, who's hitless in the ball game. And Ethington just trying to find the strike zone here in the sixth. Second inning of relief for Ethington. It's falling behind three and one. Here's the pitch, and that's high ball four. Back-to-back, -back, one out walks. Following the home run, Ethington shaken on the mound after allowing the solo shot. So here's Taylor Zutenhorst, and once again, in the sixth inning, Salina has put themselves in a position to make this a very close game with just one swing. Seems like they've had that opportunity Every inning in the ball game, and Zutenhorst takes a fastball from Ethington down low for ball one. Stranded two runners in the third, three runners in the fourth, and two more runners in the fifth. They've stranded nine so far in the first five innings. 1-0, and Zutenhorst fouls it down the left field line out of play. Two more runners on here in this sixth inning. Stoppers in. Five innings, they've only stranded four. They've just been bringing everybody home. Ethington sent at the chest, the 1-1. One, one, change up, swung on and missed. Zutenhorst way out in front of the change up there. D, go back to it here if you're Ethington. The left-hander at the plate. Fastball just hasn't been able to locate it here. The runners go. The pitch is swung on and missed. Molinari's throw to third into left field. Getting up and racing home is Zane Gelfman. So a run's going to come in to score. Zutenhorst does go down on strikes, and that'll be an error by Daniel Molinari behind the plate. Zutenhorst down on strikes. They put the double steal on. Gelfman takes third and then scores on the Molinari throwing air. So just a three-run ball game now with two out, and Ryan Rodriguez, who hit a solo home run against Ethington in the fifth, will bat. First stomper error of the ball game, and Rodriguez is tied up on an inside fastball. He swings through it, nothing in one. Two runs here in the top of the sixth for Salina, making it 9-6. to six. The 0-1, and Rodriguez takes a spotted fastball in the outside corner from Ethington. Marshall Schill, the sidearm right-hander, is up in the stopper bullpen. If needed. Ethington has allowed three runs in the last two innings. Way ahead of Rodriguez, nothing in two. Here's the pitch, and that is high ball one. Elected to go with a fastball there and miss. Artson's down at third base, 90 feet away. Ethington out of the stretch. Here comes his 1-2. That's low. It skips away from Molinari. Here comes Artson. Molinari will not throw. 9-7. On the ball in the dirt. Three runs have come in for Salina here in the sixth inning. This latest run, a wild pitch. 
Now just a two-run ball game and what was once a huge stopper lead. The 2-2 two 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 pitch is on the outside corner, so Ethington picks up his fifth strikeout in two innings, but he allows three runs here in the sixth. It's now just 9-7. Coming up for the Stompers, the 2-3-4 spots. North Bay Credit Union is proud to be part of Sonoma County's home team. We're your progressive alternative to big banks, delivering a full roster of great banking services, but at much lower costs. Our lineup always hits it out of the park. Auto loans, home loans, manufactured home loans, and 100% free checking that pays you back. We're equally proud to support lots of local groups, including the Sonoma Stompers, because that's what neighbors do. We're the home of league-leading Casasa Checking. Casasa Checking is better than free. It pays you, and you choose how you want to be rewarded. Bonus dividends on your deposits or cash back on your debit card purchases. And Casasa makes any ATM a free ATM. It's easy to switch to Casasa in just minutes at NorthBayCU.com. Our convenient branches are just a short stop from anywhere, including our newest Sonoma Valley and Rohnert Park locations. Don't let banks throw curveballs at your budget with high rates and foul fees. Count on North Bay Credit Union to save you money every day. Learn more at NorthBayCU.com or call 707-584-0384. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community. And Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Matt Hibbert leads us off in the bottom of the sixth inning. Just a two-run game against Ridge Ackerman. His first pinch to Hibbert is inside ball one. Three runs in the top half for Salina. Just one of them earned against Willie Ethington. The 1-0 pinch, and Hibbert hits it high to left center field. On the run, Bishop over toward the gap. Right in front of the wall in left center field, he reaches up, makes the catch before he bangs into the wall for out number one. Hibbert hit it well, gave it a ride to left center, but just the wrong part of the ballpark. Chris Quitzer will hit. One for two, a single. Walked, struck out. He scored a run. He's stolen the base. He's done just about everything. And the stomper bats trying to come to life here against Ridge Ackerman in the bottom of the sixth inning. Two in the second, one in the fourth, one in the fifth, three in the sixth for Salina for seven runs. Quitzer takes outside ball one. The stopper is seven in the second, two in the fourth. Hit around in that second inning, sent 10 men to the plate. The 1 0 pitch, and Quitzer takes outside, 2 0. Trying to extend the lead back out. It was 9 3 at one point, the 2 0. Inside the Quincer, ball three. It's been the walks. Ten walks for Stomper pitching today. That's way outside to Quincer. A four pitch walk here in the sixth. Second time Quincer has walked in the ball game. Here's Brent Gillespie. It seems like a quiet day for Gillespie. He's only one for three with a two run home run. And that feels like a quiet day, especially with what he's done the last three games. Stompers as a team have homered nine times in the last three games. First pitch to Gillespie, he reaches for the fastball and fouls it out of play. Allowed out number one off the bat of Matt Hibbert, a long fly ball to left center.
Quitzer's at first base. Here's the 0-1. Swung on and missed. Nothing in two. Defensively at second base, Sheeks is deep in the 3-4 hole with his heels on the outfield grass. Artson at second playing up the middle three steps to the shortstop side of the bag and Gelfman is in the 5-6 hole over at third. Nothing in two. Gillespie rests the bat on the shoulder now brings it up. Ackerman set. The 0-2. Outside, one ball and two strikes. Stompers with men in scoring position today. They're three for four. Just haven't gotten men in scoring position. They've homered them all home before they can get to second base. One ball, two strikes on Gillespie. Here's the pitch. And he ropes it into right field past Quitzer, who somehow gets out of the way. It missed Chris Quitzer by inches. And thankfully... He would have been out. Gillespie ropes his second hit of the day. Single to right, and here's Miles Williams. So now Williams with a chance to really up this lead. He homered his last time up. That was in the fourth inning off of Eric Gleese, the Salinas starter. Hibbert flying to center, a walk and a single. That put stoppers at first and second. Williams one for two in the game. Here's the first pitch, and he hits it in the air to left. That is scorched. On Back on it goes Rodriguez, and Miles Williams has left the ballpark. A line shot over the wall and left. A three-run shot for Williams, and it's 12 to 7. My goodness, that was a rocket off the bat of Miles Williams. His second home run in as many at bats, his 11th of the season. Oh my goodness. The ball is flying out of the yard here today. Fifth stopper home run of the ball game. The second for Williams. This one a three run home run. He has five RBIs in the game. So here's Jacob Barfield, right-handed hitter. First pitch from Ridge Ackerman, and he takes a big hack and fouls it back to the screen. Stoppers four for five with men in scoring position. Three of those home runs. Ackerman's nothing in one pitch, and Barfield waves at a breaking ball. First multi-home run game of the season for Miles Williams and Barfield. It's a sky-high pop-up to short right center field. Sheik's going out, and that's going to fall in right center. Barfield's headed for second. The throw is late. Second hit of the day for Jacob Barfield. He just looped a lazy fly ball to right center field. Back on it went Sheik's to second baseman. In came Knight and Bisham from right and center. Nobody had it. So Jacob Barfield has a double. Nick Kern trying to keep the success going with men in scoring position today. Make that four for five with all four home runs. With men in scoring position today. A got a two run, a Gillespie two run, a Miles Williams two run, and a Miles Williams three run. Kern in the ball game, he's 0 for 1, a pair of walks. He's scored once. And just when the Stompers need to wake up the bats once again, they do. A Williams three-run home run. Barfield at second. One out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The first pitch to Nick Kern. He takes a fastball down below the knees from Ridge Ackerman for ball one. One and oh, Kern, the right-handed hitter. He's the DH today. The pitch. Fouled straight back and out of play. One ball, one strike on Kern. Three runs in the top half for Salina, and the Stompers have answered with three of their own to make it 12-7. 
Kern rests the bat on the shoulder as Ackerman stares in. Now the low set below the belt. He looks to second. The 1-1 pitch. Breaking ball swung on and missed. Just kept working its way away from Kern. The count is 1-2. and two. Nobody up in Salina's bullpen. Marshall Shield was up for the Stompers. The last half inning. Kern awaits the 1-2. Ackerman staring in. Barfield standing out at second. Ackerman steps off. Kraus going through a series of signs. Now here's the 1-2. Kern takes a breaky ball in the dirt, blocked nicely by Nick Kraus. Barfield stays at second base. The count is 2-2. Two and two. Daniel Molinari on deck. Matt Hibbert flying to deep left center field to open the inning, then quits her walk. Gillespie roped a single before Williams left the ballpark for the second time today. Ackerman's 2-2 pitch coming to Nick Kern. He chases a breaking ball low for strike three. Third strikeout for Ackerman in the game. With two away, here's Daniel Molinari. Molinari has reached on an error in the game. He's 0 for 3. It's Molinari in the season with men in scoring position 6 for 12. Even 500. First pitch from Ackerman. Takes in side ball 1. In on the hands. Molinari had to pull the hands out of the way. Five-run lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Ackerman looks out to Barfield at second, now throws on 1-0, and oh, and that fastball's a little bit outside. Molinari ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes on Ackerman out of the pen. Molinari's going to call time and step out. We check on that game over in Napa. The Admirals have put another run on the board and extended the lead to 7-4 there in the top of the seventh inning. The 2-0. Side ball three. By Napa and Vallejo. Vallejo's won five straight. Napa has lost three straight. Napa sitting at 523 and 23, Vallejo at 24 and 23. They've overtaken third place in the Pacific Association. 3-0 to Molinari. Tapped at the plate, 3-1. And, and Molinari sitting on one pitch there, 3-0. He got a pitch he liked. Put a good swing on it, but was just able to get a little piece. Three and one, the count. Barfield at second base. He could score on a base hit. The three-one pitch into left center field. That is Mash going back on it. Is Bishop and it one hops off the wall. Molinari cruises into second. He has an RBI double. It's thirteen-seven. Molinari's first hit of the ball game. His ninth run batted into the season. His second double of the year. Here comes Racing Romero. Stompers continuing to hit the ball hard here throughout the whole ball game. Molinari fly to center his first time up here today, and that time he got it over the head of Bishop in center field. So here's Romero. He's two for three, a single and a double. With Molinari at second, the first pinch, Romero takes a curveball in the dirt from Ridge Ackerman. One ball and no strikes. Ackerman's going to take a step off the backside of the rubber, readjust the belt. He's going to retuck the jersey in. 
Now grab the glove and climb up the back side of the slope. Stompers have scored four times in this bottom of the sixth inning, extending the lead 13 to seven. Molinari, the latest stomper to drive and run his ninth RBI. Now Romero hits it high and deep to left center field. Bishop going over in the gap. He'll have room and he'll make the catch. Three run home run for Miles Williams and RBI double for Daniel Molinari. We'll go to the seventh. Stoppers lead 13 7. Stoppers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Stompers get four more runs in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Miles Williams, second home run of the ball game. And a Daniel Molinari, RBI double to left center field. So with a 13-7 lead, Willie Ethington will go back out to the hill. He'll face the 8-9-1 spots of the Salina order. Here in the seventh, we've entered the final third of the ball game here today. They're in the last third of the ball game over in Napa with the Admirals leading the Silverados 8 Four. Stompers trying to win their fourth straight. Right in the middle of this eight game stretch today. Number six of eight in a row. We're here tomorrow at 6.05. The Napa Silverados are going to be in the house. And then we're on the road Tuesday in Vallejo. And Ethington deals strike one to Nick Kraus. Ethington has faced Kraus once in this game. He walked him. Working quickly in the seventh, the 0-1 curveball swung on and missed. Another beautiful bender from Willie Ethington. Warranting the swing and a miss from Kraus there. I had nothing in two. It's Kraus, Knight, Bishop, 8-9-1. Ethington out of the stretch is nothing in two pitch. A little bit outside with a fastball. So Marshall Schill will get back up and he'll start to toss in the stomper bullpen. He was warming up in the sixth, and then Ethington was able to get out of the inning. Ethington's allowed four runs, just two earned in the last two innings. Walks have really hurt him. He's given up two solo home runs. The one-two, curveball punched over off the front screen of the stomper dugout. But Ethington in two innings, he struck out five. So it's been a little bit of everything. Just trying to find that happy medium. Loving the strikeouts, but he's not so much loving those walks. 
Three of them in two innings for Ethington. The one-two pitch again to Krause. Slow with a fastball. Fifty-fifth pitch from Ethington on two and two, and Kraus pops it out of play. Roderick, who threw 105 in four innings. It's been a high pitch count day all the way around, really, for everybody. Gleason, four innings through 100 pitches. Here's the 2-2 again to Kraus. He fouls off a high fastball. Ethington bringing it. Stuff's been good. It's just been both sides of the spectrum. The five strikeouts and the three walks, a couple of home runs. He has Kraus in a 2-2 count to open this top of the seventh inning. Here's the pitch. Low, and the count is full. Today, game number 30 here at home. Stompers trying to win their 24th in 30 home games. Payoff pitch coming to Kraus. Here it is from Willie, and that is rolled foul along third. Tenth pitch of the at-bat to Nick Kraus is coming up. That's the longest in the ball game for either side. Still three and two with Johnny Knight on deck. Kraus digs back in the right side, taps the bat on home plate. Now brings it back. Ethington out of the stretch. His payoff pitch once again. Swung on and miss. Pull the string. Sixth strikeout for Willie Ethington. He struck out three, stock eight in a row. One out, nobody on, and Johnny Knight will be the hitter. Knight's reached all three times. A single and a pair of walks in the game for Knight. Base is empty and one out. Knight stands in. Ethington deals the first pitch inside tonight. Ethington's 1-0 pitch out of the stretch, and he dots the outside corner. One and one the count. Ethington, who spent some time between 2012 and 2014 in the Boston Red Sox organization, spent 2016 to 2018 in the Pecos League on one and one. He misses down low. Little inches below the knees of Johnny Knight for ball two. Willie Ethington, the 25-year-old. Starting to find some sort of a groove here in the seventh. The 2-1, swung on and miss. Yeah, Ethington in two and a third. Six strikeouts. He struck out three stockade in a row. In a game that wasn't a high strikeout game for either side, Ethington has come in and changed that narrative. He stares into Molinari, who sets the target on Knight. Here comes the 2-2. Popped up. Right side of the infield, Nick Gata on the outfield grass. Shading his eyes, he makes the catch. A tough play for Gata, no doubt, looking straight into that bright, shining sun. Able to make the catch, moving the glove away from shading his eyes at the very last second. Here's Cody Bishop, the leadoff man. The sun has been blinding today. We've seen it commit a couple of errors on defenders today, and Ethington's first pitch to Cody Bishop is inside. Forced Gelfman to drop a ball at third, giving him an error. And we had a little bloop into right center field giving Jacob Barfield a double where nobody could see it because of the sun. The 1-0 pitch, and Bishop 
Pops it up, left center field. Romero now back out, backpedaling. Jacob Barfield calls him off in Ethington as a 1-2-3 seventh, and he is retired six in a row. We go to the home half. Stretch time here at Palooza Park at Arnold Field. The top of the lineup coming up. Stoppers lead 13-7. North Bay Credit Union is proud to be part of Sonoma County's home team. We're your progressive alternative to big banks, delivering a full roster of great banking services, but at much lower costs. Our lineup always hits it out of the park. Auto loans, home loans, manufactured home loans, and 100% free checking that pays you back. We're equally proud to support lots of local groups, including the Sonoma Stompers, because that's what neighbors do. We're the home of league-leading Casasa Checking. Casasa Checking is better than free. It pays you, and you choose how you want to be rewarded. Bonus dividends on your deposits, or cash back on your debit card purchases. And Casasa makes any ATM a free ATM. It's easy to switch to Casasa in just minutes at NorthBayCU.com. Our convenient branches are just a short stop from anywhere, including our newest Sonoma Valley and Rohnert Park locations. Don't let banks throw curveballs at your budget with high rates. Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty, Sonoma Hills Retirement Community, and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma. And social media support is provided by Word Mice. Seventh inning, Nick Gatta will lead us off. He's one for three with a two-run home run in the game. It'll be Gatta, Hibbert, and Quitzer. One, two, three against Ren Jackerman in his third inning. And Gatta promptly lines a base hit to left center field. That'll split the defenders and go all the way to the wall. Gatta hustling into second. He has a leadoff double. Eighth double of the season for Gatta to lead off the home half of the seventh. Stompers are lining the baseball all over the yard here today. So here's Matt Hibbert. Hibbert's 0 for 3, walked and scored. And gave it a good ride his last time up, and Cody Bishop in center field ran it down in the gap right in front of the wall. And Hibbert looking to notch his first hit of the game, and Ackerman's first pinch is a breaking ball. Outside and low to Matt Hibbert, one ball and no strikes. So we check on that game in Napa. Vallejo leads 9-4 to four in the bottom of the seventh. The 1-0. Hibbert fouls it out of play, 1-1. One one. Stoppers up 13-7 with seven runs in the second inning. Two in the fourth, four in the sixth. One ball and one strike on Matt Hibbert. In an RBI situation here in the seventh inning, and he hits a one-hopper on the ground to short. Artson up with it. He'll throw to first in time to retire. Hibbert one away. Stoppers five for nine now with men in scoring position after being five for six at one point. Four of those hits, home runs. Here's Chris Quintzer with a man at second and one out. He's got a hit today. He's reached three times. He's walked twice. Left-handed hitter at the plate. Ackerman's first pitch, and Quintzer takes outside and a little bit low. One ball, no strikes on Quintzer. Waiting for somebody to pinch him inside. Every time he does, he just lines baseballs all over the field. They're staying away from him. 
The 1-0 is away again, ball two. Everybody's staying away and staying soft on Chris Quitzer here in the last month. The average and 307 coming into the ball game. Ackerman wants a new baseball. Two balls, no strikes. Got to open the inning with a double to left center. He's out at second. 2-0 oh on Quincer with one out. They play straight up defensively against him. The 2-0. -oh. High pop-up. Out beyond short. Artson, the shortstop out on the grass. He makes the catch. Here's Brent Gillespie. He's two for four today with a two-run home run and a single. Trying to get Gata home after the leadoff double. Last two hitters have failed to do so. Quitzer pops up to short. Hibbert grounds to short. Gillespie, another multi-hit game here today. And on the season, Gillespie, his 12th multi-hit game in 27 games. His numbers continue to impress here in 2019. He rests the bat on the shoulder. Ackerman's first pitch to him. Way out in front of a changeup. Good pitch to Ackerman. From Ackerman to open the bat to Brent Gillespie. Trying to strand the leadoff double. Gillespie waiting. Ackerman at the belt. He looks out to Gata at second base, the 0-1. Inside to Gillespie, one ball and one strike. They stayed, sto stayed soft on him there with a breaking ball. Sheeks at second is on the outfield grass. Canella at first has his heels on the outfield grass. Arts in the shortstop is right up the middle behind the bag. Tons of room on the left side of the infield. Gelfman, a couple of extra steps off the line, but nothing too extreme. A 1-1. One -one. Gillespie hits it sky high on the left side of the infield. Gelfman behind the bag at third on the outfield grass. He makes the catch, and the inning is over. Stoppers get a leadoff double from Nick Gata, but they strand him at second, so we'll go to the eighth. It's the Stoppers 13, the Stockade 7. Stoppers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma and social media support is provided by Word Mice. This is going to come in for the eighth inning. He'll face the two, three, four spots of the Salina order for Schill. No record, a 3.92 ERA. This will be the 20th game in which he's appeared, 20 and two-thirds innings. 
Nine earned runs on 26 hits with 22 strikeouts and nine walks for the sidearm right-hander from Cottonwood, Arizona. Standing at six foot five, working out of the stretch, his first pitch is high, ball one. See the fastball slider from Schill primarily and with that low, low sidearm angle. Plenty of movement on the fastball and even more movement on his slider. The 1-0 to Sheeks is punched in the air to Gillespie at first. Still make the catch. One out. Here's Cosimo Canella. Two pitches and one out for Marshall Schill to open the eighth inning. He'll face Canella, who's reached all four times. Two for three, a single, a home run, a fielder's choice, and an RBI walk. He's driven in two. Schill out of the stretch with nobody on. His first pitch to Canella. A slider for strike one. And the slider for Schill when it's on, which is most nights that he appears. North Bay Credit Union is proud to be part of the hitters. Thing moves about three and a half feet. The 0 1 pitch. Two seamer threw it right by Canella. Nothing in two. And for Schill, who does have that low sidearm release, you don't expect the velocity that comes out of the right arm. 87 to 90 for Marshall Schill. And with just a wipeout slider, he's ahead, nothing in two on Canella. And we'll likely see another slider here. He's at the belt. The 0-2 delivery. Slider found back to the screen. He throws that slider. It's like a Frisbee-like slider. This thing moves. Plate is 17 inches wide. It probably moves 38 inches sometimes. Then he'll run that fastball up at 88, 89 and just surprise the heck out of you. He shanks Molinari once here. Now they agree. Nobody on and one out his 0-2 pitch. So slider and Cosimo Canella reaches for it, strike three. Two up, two down against Schill, who collects his first strike out of the game. There's Zane Gelfman. Gelfman's 0 for 2 in the game. He's walked twice. Ron Adams will get a couple of new baseballs. Two quick outs for Schill. Stompers in the eighth will have the five, six, seven hitters, and Miles Williams, who's hit two home runs in the game, will lead things off. Nobody's up in this line of bullpen, so we're anticipating Ridge Ackerman back out there for his fourth inning of work. Schill shanks once. Now he agrees with Molinari, who sets the target. The right-hander deals, and... That's punched on the ground, softly right side. Got it over to his left on the outfield grass. Flips to first. A one, two, three, eighth inning for Marshall Schill. He makes quick work of the Salina order. So we'll go to the stopper half of the eighth. Stompers lead 13 7. You're a bridge builder, a connector, a people person. You make every moment count, and you know how to count every moment. You know people who are going places, and you help them get there. California's business is your business. You specialize in special, and we specialize in your specialty. No matter what your background is, or where you want to go, at Nelson, every day is a great day for a first day. Connect with a Nelson recruiter in your city to start working on putting your next first day on the calendar. Nelson, our talent is finding yours. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associate, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma and social media support is provided by Word Mice.
New pitcher for Salina here in the bottom of the eighth inning. It's going to be left-hander Thomas Caulfield. In relief, Ackerman goes three innings, allows four runs, all earned on five hits. He strikes out three and walks one. So Caulfield, the left-hander, is on here in the eighth. He'll face Williams, Barfield, and Kern scheduled to come up. Austin Orvis throwing in the stopper bullpen, so the ninth inning will likely belong to Orvis. Caulfield in the game. The left-hander started out with San Rafael. Now he's in a Salina Stockade uniform. He'll face Miles, who is one of the hottest hitters here today. Two for three. Two home runs. Five RBIs for Williams. First multi-home run game of the season for him. He'll face the left-hander Caulfield out of the stretch. First pitch popped up. Out of play, off to the right. So it was Gleese for four. Ackerman for three. Caulfield here in the eighth. For the Stompers, it went Broderick for four. Ethington for three. Schill went one. And now Austin Orvis up and throwing in the stopper bullpen. The 0-1 delivery from Thomas Caulfield is inside and low to Miles Williams for ball one. An exciting game over in Napa. It was 9-4 Admirals at one point. Napa has scored four times in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's just now a one-run game, 9-8 Vallejo. The 1-1 from Caulfield to Williams in the dirt. Two balls and a strike. And if you're wondering if anybody's ever had a three-home run game in the Pacific Association, one time. Last year, Alan Mockaby of the Martinez Clippers. That's it. Two balls and one strike on Miles Williams. He's ahead in the count. The pitch from Caulfield. Inside and low. Ninety-five different players have had a two-home run game. The count's three and one on Williams. He'll be followed by Barfield and Kern. Caulfield's three-one. Outside ball four. Williams on base for the fourth time today. Lead off this bottom of the eighth. Here's Jacob Barfield. He's two for four. A two-run home run and a double. Facing the left-hander, Thomas Caulfield. Caulfield heavy with the walks when donning a San Rafael uniform. First pinch to Barfield. Inside with a fastball for ball one. One ball and no strike pinch coming from Caulfield, and Barfield takes a huge hack and comes up empty. The fastball high and away. Barfield, who never gets cheated. One and one the count. Williams with a short lead at first. The left-hander on the hill. Caulfield looks over that way. Now the 1-1. One, one. Outside ball two. Two balls, one strike. Barfield back in the box. Williams still with a short lead. Caulfield's 2 1. In the dirt, 3 and 1. Three ball, one strike pitch coming from Thomas Caulfield to Jacob Barfield. Here it is, and he walked him. 
Back-to-back -back walks. It's Thomas Caulfield and now Taylor Zutenhorst. He's going to come out of the dugout and he'll go talk to Caulfield. Nobody's up in the stockade bullpen. 13 7 Stompers in the eighth. With Nick Kern coming to the plate. Kern's looking for his first hit of the ball game. He's reached twice on errors. Make that walks. Two walks for Kern. He struck out and flied to right, and now a right hander will get up for Salina and start to throw in the bullpen. First and second with nobody out, Kern. After back-to-back -back walks open the inning, a chance to drive in a couple of runs. The first pitch from Caulfield, and that's inside and low. One ball, no strikes. Kern has a home run in six RBIs. He's driven in three in the last two games. The 1-0. Absolutely crushed to left. Where did it go? 16-7 on Kearns. Second home run in two days. Holy cow. It went up. I don't think it came down. Three-run shot for Kern. Holy God. My goodness. Are you kidding me? One of the furthest balls hit we've seen today, and that's saying something. My God. My God. Absolutely crushed. Kern's second home run. It's 16 to 7. Oh my God, Eddie. Here's Daniel Molinari. First pitch, breaking ball high and away, ball one. One ball and no strikes. Second home run for Kern in as many days. And the one he hit last night was crushed, and that one topped it for sure. The 1 0. Down low to Molinari. Two balls and no strikes. Kern, after being activated this week, making it really tough on Zach Pace to keep him out of the lineup. DH here today. Can't get over that. Here's the 2 0. High in the ball, Nari ball three, and they're going to get right hander going quickly in that Salina bullpen now. Three balls and no strikes on Daniel Molinari. Here's the pitch from Caulfield outside of four-pitch walk. Third walk of the inning. Now Racing Romero will bat. Got a homered. Gillespie homered. Williams homered twice. Barfield homered. Kern homered for the sixth stopper home run. Three balls were absolutely demolished by Salina. There's been nine in the game, and I think Nick Kern has the biggest home run. I mean, that thing, that's further than any ball I've seen hit in batting practice here. Outside to Race and Romero, ball one. It's a bunch of redwood trees in left, which are about 50 feet behind the bleachers, and I think it landed 75 feet behind the trees. Easily 400-plus feet for Nick Kern. And a mammoth home run. The 1-0 outside to Romero. They'll be talking about that one for a long time. Two balls, no strikes on Racing Romero. That pitch is high. 
three and oh. Still shaking our heads up here and how far that ball traveled off the bat of Nick Kern. The 3-0 to Romero at the letters high. Another walk from Thomas Caulfield, his fourth of the inning. So it went walk, walk, home run, walk, walk, pitching change. That'll end the game for Thomas Caulfield. He doesn't get it out. Chuck Rocker out of the dugout. He will come get his man. Pitching change brought to you by Sonoma Hills Retirement. First and second, nobody out. Nick Gatto will bat against the new pitcher when we come back. New pitcher for the Stockade. Going to be right-hander Ricky Bielski making his 18th appearance. A 9 ERA in 19 innings. He's allowed 19 runs, 25 strikeouts, and 22 walks. So the strikeout walk numbers are high for Bielski. In an inning where we've seen four walks, a three-run home run on the home run by Nick Kern. And we really don't know where it went. It may have landed in another area code. I mean, that thing was absolutely crushed, just demolished. There's a building back there, and we think it may have hit or landed on the building. That sits about 150 feet beyond the wall. So here's Nick Gata, the first pitch, swung on and missed against Ricky Bielski. Gata has two hits in the game, a double and a two-run home run. Nine home runs in this game. Combined, Stompers have six. Bielski, the right-hander on 0-1. Gotta takes a changeup in the dirt. First and second for Bielski coming in with nobody out. Walk to Williams, walk to Barfield. The Kern monster home run. Walk to Molinari, walk to Romero. One and one, the count on Kern, the or on Gata, that is, the left-handed batter. The other Nick in the lineup today. He tops it on the ground, up the middle, and past a diving Artson into center field. A base hit for Nick Gata. Bases are loaded for Matt Hibbert.
Here's Matt Hibbert, the first pitch from Ricky Bielski. Fouled off at the plate, and the count is 0-1. The Stomper scored 17 runs in a game earlier this season and a 17-12 win over the Stockade. Right now they sit at 16. Base is loaded and nobody out in the eighth. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Bielski. Hibbert takes a called strike on the outside corner. No balls and two strikes to count. Oh, and two on Hibbert. Here's the pitch, and the breaking ball is fouled away. Still nothing in two on Matt Hibbert with the bases loaded. The pitch from Bielski is high, ball one. As we're checking a couple of different things. One, the most runs the Stoppers have scored this year in a game, 17. Ever in a game, 20. It came in 2017, a 20-11 win over the San Rafael Pacifics as the one-two pitch to Hibbert's a breaking ball down low. Chasing 20. Two balls in, two strikes on Hibbert. Molinari at third, Romero at second, Gata at first, the 2-2 two -two pitch. Coming and Hibbert breaks his bat on the grounder to short. Artson will boot it. Run comes in to score. Seventeen seven. An error by Arntzen out at shortstop. Allows Matt Hibbert to reach. And now the bases are loaded still. Here's Chris Quitzer, the first pitch from Ricky Bielski. Misses down low. Chasing 20. That's the record. One ball in, no strikes to Quitzer. Here's the pitch. Fouls it away, one and one. Quitzer has a hit in the game. One for three, a couple of walks. Six home runs, 36 RBIs on the season for Quitzer. Still nobody out, the 1-1. One, one. Line down the left field. Line that's going to fall, and it bangs off the wall. Romero's going to score. Gata stays at third. They go station to station. The RBI single for Chris Quitzer, and it's 18-7. to seven. Quitzer with his second hit of the ball game, his first run batted into the game. And Gillespie's going to hit. He's the ninth man to hit here this inning. Still nobody out. Eight men have come up. Eight men have reached. First pitch. Popped up. Left side foul territory. Zane Gelfman over near the dugout. He reaches back and makes an acrobatic catch. Gillespie's the first out here in the eighth inning. Pops up in foul territory. And here's Miles Williams who opened the inning with a walk. Just one out. Bases are loaded for Williams. Bielski's first pitch, and Williams takes a breaking ball at the knees. Called a strike. It's nothing in one. Austin Orvis has been throwing in the somber bullpen. For about 25 minutes. Yeah. 
Bielski's 0-1. Outside to Williams, one ball and one strike. Well, only one man has ever hit three home runs in the game in the Pacific Association, and Williams, when he let off this inning, and after he walked, we didn't think he'd have a chance to become the second. The 1-1. Topped on the ground softly, too short. Artson will charge, he fields, he'll throw to first. Williams is retired for the second out. A run comes in to score. 19-7. So Williams has six RBIs in the game. Jacob Barfield will come up. Barfield walked earlier this inning. Here's the first pitch to him, and he takes a breaking ball. Called a strike in the outside corner. Nothing in one to count. Second and third now with two outs. Barfield awaits the 0-1. Here it is. A curveball from Bielski misses inside and low. So Miles Williams one shy of the stopper franchise record. For runs batted in in a game. The 1-1 one, one pitch and Barfield ropes it foul down third. One ball, two strikes on Barfield. The first eight men reached in the inning. Bielski's 1-2. Breaking ball high, 2-2. Two and two. Barfield, the 11th man to hit in this eighth inning. The second time in the game the Stompers have hit around. Guess who's on deck? It's Nick Kern, the 2-2. Breaking ball fouled away. Boy, doesn't everybody want to see Nick Kern hit again? About half the people here do. Half of them don't. <laughs> Six runs in the inning so far. Barfield awaits the 2-2. Second and third, two out. Here's the pitch. It's outside, and the count is full. Barfield's two for four, a two-run home run, a double, a walk. Payoff pitch coming from Ricky Bielski to Jacob Barfield. Here it is, and that's fouled out of play. We'll do the 3-2 over again. Eighth pitch of the at-bat to Jacob Barfield. With Hibbert at third, Quitzer at second, the pitch. Outside ball four. Nick Kern, the man who has hit the furthest ball I think we've ever seen here in this ballpark earlier this inning. A three-run shot started the scoring here this inning, and it still probably hasn't landed. Base is loaded. Two out for Kern. First pitch, breaking ball outside, ball one. Kern's one for three with that three-run ball. Can't even think of a term appropriate to describe the home run. The 1-0. Low ball two. Tape measure shot for Kern. The UCLA kid, SoCal kid, awaits the 2-0 from Bielski. The pitch. On the outside corner, strike one. Kern's been waiting his opportunity to showcase the power. And he's done it in the last two ball games. Here comes the 2 1 pitch. Low ball three. Just 
Stomper records 20 runs in the game. Sit at 19 with the bases loaded and a 3-1 count with two out to Nick Kern. The 3-1 pitch. Swung on and missed and the count is full. Runners will get a head start. Hibbert from third, Quincer from second, Barfield from first. Payoff pitch coming from Bielski. Runners go, and that is hit back up the middle, a base hit. Hibbert scores. Quitzer scores. The throw goes to third. Nick Kern has a two-run single, two runs on the board, and that is a new franchise record, 21 runs in a game. Nick Kern with five RBIs in the inning. Let that sink in for a second. Five RBIs in the inning for Nick Kern. Franchise record, 21 runs, and they're still hitting in the eighth. Here's Daniel Molinari. He walked this inning. First pitch outside. One ball in, no strikes to Daniel Molinari. The last time the Stompers scored 20 runs was against the San Rafael Pacifics in 2017. The 1 0 to Daniel Molinari called a strike 1 and 1. Molinari has a hit in the game, an RBI double. That was back in the sixth inning. 2011 was the previous record on the 17th of June back in 2017. Molinari takes low here, 2 and 1 the count. Well, the record snapped 21 here today. And they're still hitting Molinari, the 13th man to bat here in the eighth inning. Marfield at third, Kern at first, the 2-1, and Molinari takes outside ball three. No, the line's over for Caulfield. He didn't record an out, allowed five runs on one hit. The 3-1 pitch coming to Daniel Molinari from Ricky Bielski, and he fouls it back to the screen, and the count is full. Austin Orvis has been warming up for 36 minutes. In the stomper bullpen. The inning started at 4.02. The bottom half, that is. The payoff pitch coming to Molinari. Kern takes off and he hits it on the ground to third. Gelfman fields behind the bag. The throw to first. High. And Canella gets back down on the bag. The inning is over, whether you believe it or not. We'll go to the ninth stopper who set a franchise record. 21 runs. And lead by two touchdowns. Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case, PG&E. 
Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. Stompers going to the top of the ninth with a two touchdown lead and Austin Orvis is going to come on here in the ninth inning. He'll face Artson, Zutenhorst, and Rodriguez, the five, six, seven hitters for Salina. Stompers score eight times in the eighth inning. Nick Kern, five RBIs in the inning. In the inning. My goodness. So it'll be Austin Orvis, the 6'5 right hander. His first pitch to Omar Artson is well inside for ball one. Orvis appearing in his fourth game. A six ERA in three innings. He's allowed two runs on three hits, and Artson pulls the 1 0 pitch foul down the left field line, one and one. He struck out four and walked one in three innings of work. He appeared two nights ago in San Rafael and pitched a clean ninth. It's 1-1 to Artson. On the ground to second, Gata will field on two hops, and he'll flip over to first, one out. Stomper record. 21 runs in a game. Previously, the... 17th of June back in 2017 in a 22-11 win over San Rafael. That was the previous record. Here's the first pitch to Zutenhorst. Outside ball one. One ball and no strikes on Taylor Zutenhorst, and Orvis deals a strike on the outside corner. So the score of that game was 20, stoppers 20, Pacific's 11. 21 7 here. The 1 1. Zutenhorst pops it up out of play off to the left. The last nine stockade have been retired in a row. Combined, Ethington Schill, and now Austin Orvis with one out here in the ninth. One two pitch swung on and missed. Austin Orvis has his strike out and two away here in the ninth, and Salina mercifully down to their final out. Here's Ryan Rodriguez. It's a pair of hits in the game, including a solo home run. First pitch to him from Austin Orvis out of the windup. Strike one on the inside corner. 92 mile an hour fastball from Austin Orvis. Get ahead of Ryan Rodriguez. The 0 1 pitch to the right hander. Tapped at the plate, nothing in two. Salina down to their final strike. 
Reminder, the Stompers are here tomorrow night at 6.05 against the Silverados. We're on the road on Tuesday in Vallejo. The 0-2 for Morvis, high with a fastball. Well over in Napa, the Silverados have taken a 10-9 lead over the Admirals, so Napa trying to break a three-game losing streak and snap the Admirals' five-game win streak. That's been a back-and-forth affair all day long. Can't say the same here, really. The 1-2, high 2-2. Two two. It was Broderick for 4, Ethington for 3, Schill, 1, 2, 3, eighth. Two up, two down against Orvis here in the top of the ninth inning. Rodriguez, the hitter. Ground out to second and a strikeout, the 2-2 pitch. Line down the left field line. That'll fall for a hit. Barfield will play it off of the wall. Rodriguez will hold at first. Base hit against Orvis keeps the ninth inning alive, and Nick Krause will come to the plate. Two-bounce single for Ryan Rodriguez, his third hit of the game. Brings up Kraus, the catcher. He's homered in the game. First pitch from Morvis, rolled foul along third. Nothing in one on Nick Kraus. The Stomper is trying to improve to 23 games over 500 and extend the lead in the Pacific Association to eight games exactly with San Rafael having the day off. Orvis on nothing in one. Now low to Kraus. San Rafael with today and tomorrow off. The win today would put it at eight, and then the chance to make the lead eight and a half tomorrow. Orvis out of the stretch, the 1-1. One, one. Kraus takes high. Two balls, one strike the count. Arntzen grounded to second. Zutenhorst struck out for two quick outs before Rodriguez singled to left. 2-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. Slide it down to their final strike again. So Broderick, a season high, seven walks in. He gets out of the game without a decision today. The 2-2. On the ground, left side, Romero deep in the hole at short. He'll have a long throw to first. It's not in time. Goes past Brent Gillespie. That'll be a hit for Nick Kraus. Couple of two-out singles here in the ninth inning, and Johnny Knight will bat. First and second, two out. Back to back, two out singles. Johnny Knight, who is one for two. Right handed hitter against Austin Orvis. First pitch. Right back up the middle, past the head of Orvis into center field. Rodriguez will stay at third base. So three consecutive two out singles have loaded the bases. Here they come. Cody Bishop is the hitter. One for five, and Austin Orvis has given up three consecutive two-out singles. Bishop, lefty stands in. Orvis out of the stretch. Here's his first pitch to Bishop. It's high ball one. Orvis is trying to end this thing. Today game six in a row. We'll play eight in a row before having an off day on Wednesday. The 1-0 pitch on the outside corner. Strike one to Bishop. 
Stompers trying to win their ninth and 11 tries against the Stockade this year. The 1-1 one, one pitch. High ball two. It's the beauty of baseball, right? You have to get the last out. Orvis trying to do so. The 2-1. High three and one. After two quick outs, three singles. Here's the 3-1. Bishop swings through it. Count is full. So line it down to their final strike. Again, we said that before. For the third time in the inning. So line it down to their final strike. Runners go, payoff pitch, high and away. They get 21-8. to eight. The walk for Cody Bishop to drive in the run. Here's the shortstop, Aaron Sheeks. Sheeks 0 for 2 in the game. Orvis' first pitch lined into left center. Romero leaps, and the game is over. Soft line drive off the bat of Sheiks. And we're final today. Here's the final score. The final line score. First for the Stompers, 21 runs, a franchise record. On 16 hits, one error, they strand eight. And for Salina, eight runs, 10 hits, three errors, they leave 12. Final time of this afternoon's ball game. Three hours and 44 minutes. It ends in a stomper win, 21 to eight. There in the ninth, over in Napa, Silverados lead that game 10 to 9. The Stompers improve to 35 and 12, 23 games over 500, and now own an eight game lead in the Pacific Association. The losing streak for Salina goes to 19. They are now 9 and 40. Willie Ethington gets the win in today's ball game. He is 4 and 0. Oh. Eric Gleese gets the loss. He is 1 and 7. We're back here tomorrow, 6.05, first pitch right here at Palooza Park in Arnold Field as we take on the Napa Silverados. That does it for us here today. Stompers win 21-8 and set a franchise record. 21 runs for everybody with Sonoma TV and everybody with the Sonoma Stompers. You're a, you're a bridge. We'll see you tomorrow. We would like to thank our community partners. Tina Schoen, Broker Associates, Sotheby's International Realty. Sonoma Hills Retirement Community and Car Star Body Best Collision of Sonoma and social media support is provided by Word Mice. North Bay Credit Union is proud to be part of Sonoma County's home team. We're your progressive alternative to big banks, delivering a full roster of great banking services but at much lower costs. Our lineup always hits it out of the park. Auto loans, home loans, manufactured home loans, and 100% free checking that pays you back. We're equally proud to support lots of local groups, including the Sonoma Stompers, because that's what neighbors do. We're the home of league-leading Casasa Checking. Casasa Checking is better than free. It pays you, and you choose how you want to be rewarded. Bonus dividends on your deposits, or cash back on your debit card purchases. And Casasa makes any ATM a free ATM. It's easy to switch to Casasa in just minutes at NorthBayCU.com. Our convenient branches are just a short stop from anywhere, including our newest Sonoma Valley and Rohnert Park locations. Don't let banks throw curveballs at your budget with high rates and foul fees. Count on North Bay Credit Union to save you money every day. Learn more at NorthBayCU.com or call 707-584-584.
Stompers Baseball is brought to you in part by Sonoma Clean Power. As your local public electricity provider, we source clean energy from renewable resources, geothermal, water, wind, solar, and biomass. And we deliver that power to residents and businesses throughout Sonoma and Mendocino counties. At Sonoma Clean Power, we're invested in the communities we live and work in. We deliver services that enhance quality of life through competitive pricing, improved air quality, and energy efficiency. By changing the way residents source energy, we're able to deliver customer programs that make a difference in everyone's life. Powered by innovative thinking, Sonoma Clean Power was formed to provide a choice beyond for-profit investor-owned utilities, in our case PG&E. Today, Sonoma Clean Power, or SCP, is a model for community choice programs throughout California. By providing higher percentages of renewable energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, our customers are helping solve the climate crisis at a local level. You're a bridge builder, a connector, a people person. You make every moment count, and you know how to count every moment. You know people who are going places, and you help them get there. California's business is your business. You specialize in special, and we specialize in your specialty. No matter what your background is, or where you want to go, at Nelson, every day is a great day for a first day. Connect with a Nelson recruiter in your city to start working on putting your next first day on the calendar. Nelson, our talent is finding yours. <laughs>